Chasing the Racing, powered by Colchester Kawasaki, part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles. Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing, episode 161. And we're joined by our our co-host. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> he's officially a co-host. We're going to get a parking spot from outside the house. For anyone watching uh, the YouTube as well, you'll see that the the arm is strapped up. So uh, I think we'll start there. What's what's been occurring? Yeah, well, thanks for having me back. For what is it sick time now? Way more than that. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> is it actually more than six? Got to be easy. Isn't it? Yeah, it's about. Well, easy. we hit two million followers on Instagram. We thought, how can we get another million? We'll bring back Christian Eden. <laughs> I wish it was. I wish it was two million on Instagram. Two million downloads. This two million week downloads all together. So a uh, good, yeah, good landmark for us. So uh, thanks to everyone that's been sharing the sharing the good word. That's pretty impressive, lads. I've seen uh, you've got loads of extra followers on loads of social media. We we're just talking about, weren't we, about your social media platforms going skyrocketing? Yeah. But we don't. We don't know what. We don't know why. Like, is there any theories on that, Chrissy? Obviously, great. Like Grace is like she's heavily involved in it now, and like the consistency element of that is so important. Grace is actually working her ass off on it, but uh, Personally, it's, it's, algorithms. I, think, I don't know. I'm not conspiracy driven enough to know why the, these things happen. The only thing I can <laughs> link it to is from the TT. Do you know them like flyby videos? Some ah. of the some of them are getting like hundreds of thousands of views. So if after the TT during TT week because there was so much content going out it wasn't they weren't really standing out but since everything's calmed down after the TT those videos are still getting sort of shared on and it'll be to do with algorithms knowing you like mm-hmm. just for you page or whatever it is like home page and then I think people must see it and then think oh more by podcast and then click through so we'll have to wait until to see if it like translates to more views but yeah the Instagrams went very very like sort of steady up to about 10,000 well I saw your 10,000 post then about two days later i saw you fifteen thousand pounds so i was like it was mm. yeah i mean how mad it, it literally 50 percent growth in followers over i think it was four or five days and then it's i think it's on like 17 or 18 hours also so we do think it is nude someone's putting nudes out somewhere <laughs> it's gotta be some foot fetish gang out there so there's a forum out there who's swallowing this up 100 percent dodgy geordies <laughs> that, do you know that whole foot fetish thing that is a, that is a, no i don't know that well, whole, well, well, welcome, welcome to me christy welcome to the podcast kids here we are like i, I won't yeah first topic we've got foot fetish i've got some friends <laughs> that make very very good money off um selling pictures of the feet and just like people people just pay like stupid money to get fat. like to literally imagine like a video you just video yourself like wiggling your toes and then send it and like someone <laughs> someone sends you like 50 quid it's it, it it's a thing and people take like, the only fans element isn't it yeah, well it's Check similar it. to only fans but like do you know if you if your missus was say on or I can understand why people wouldn't be comfortable with I say wives being on OnlyFans I do understand that however <laughs> if if you're like say if Nicola was getting like a few like say three four hundred pound a week for sending pictures of feet to for dudes <laughs> as a married you, man would, would you, you have be a comfortable problem with, that? with that I think I'd be all right with that yeah you uh, well as long as I got a cut <laughs> Like Christian yeah. rolls in next time with a brand new van. Yeah, <laughs> Nicholas putting the shifts in. She's worked off her feet. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is mad though. No, like the world we live in, like that. People, people can make a living what, like that. No, no, I've got a friend, right? Uh, she's a mortgage advisor, and they will approve a mortgage on OnlyFans if you have an OnlyFans account because it's a written in contract so people subscribe at like six my knowledge of this is coming far <laughs> too apparent they are so you can get like six months or like 12 month contracts and that's like a set fee so you know if their wives get like call of their husbands on it they still have to pay that amount that's actually a steady contract so you think any of us employed well, me being self-employed like like even going back a subject like employed people can get the sack at any moment but imagine having a, a direct income for the year and that's what the bank will actually approve on the safety element of it. Well, that's class, isn't it? I've actually there's there's a AMA Supercross rider who is sponsored by a girl on OnlyFans, and a girl on OnlyFans. Yeah, and then and I only know about that because I follow his profile. You're being very. <laughs> we are all being very I careful promise, here. I this promise, Nicola. I promise. <laughs> but then, but then, but then I also saw there was um there there was a whole shot award. In a in an American race that was sponsored by a different girl with an OnlyFans account, so they're even advertising to their demographic that they think is their demographic. That's class, and then putting money back in. Wow, 
it's a different play. form of sponsorship. So it's no no longer your fag money or your beer money. It's your only. <laughs> well, that if me... anyone's listening and wants to <laughs> <laughs> help the cause. I said, no, but remember that t- the t- I can never pronounce his name. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy like TT Rider. He had only fans written on his R6 and his R1. The French guy. The French guy. Well, yeah. that looked oh, absolutely class, that. fully sponsored up. Because remember, wait, it was like the Pornhub days of air. Uh... I was going to say the Pornhub days with, with Tyson when he brought out the MV Augusta. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it didn't happen, did it? By the way, do you know why that got pulled? I think we actually spoke about this on the podcast, so if anyone listens to the Dave Tyson one, they'll know, but that got pulled uh, and it was all down to French regulations because they they have yes. very, uh, very, very... Um, strong rules against advertising and sport again cigarettes and uh, pornography mm-hmm. and so basically what happened was when that bike got released the just like Eurosport which is uh, based in France got in touch with BSB and said we'll cut the we'll cut the feed immediately if that bike's seen on the grid so like it wasn't the fact that BSB had a problem with it or anyone like it that all came from the TV right and that that's because it's cool. French and it, it's really strict in France. And that's why the French went at the Isle of Man. Ooh la la. What we want on the back. He, that's a good point. Have we actually discussed... Um, this is a perfect timing. You've done Spa and you did the commentary work. Did you discuss that at the TT review? No. The last episode? Not really. So I, he, oh, I, forgot, I forgot I'd done Spa. There mm-hmm. you are. <laughs> Jesus, we'll there's keep, a lot happening we, we here, We started by it? mentioning your arm, but we'll, go, we'll get to your arm in a second. Oh, he's we'll fucked up. Back. It doesn't matter. Let's move well, on. Well, we started with feet and only fans. <laughs> I did, honestly did not anticipate that line of starting out this <laughs> podcast. I'll tell you what, he's definitely a co-host, though, because we know we start off like Chris's lovely little spider diagram. Up. We'll start here, work around here. We've literally jumped straight in with both feet. <laughs> <laughs> so many feet. God, it's, but anyway, Spa. How how was it then? Twenty four hours at Spa. Um, no, I'm thinking you. How, it, must you be, it must be hard you, commentating for twenty four hours because you were racing not, in it, and he was commentating. I wasn't racing it. I was I was there. Right. What? what? So I'm for, I was fourth rider. <clears throat> so basically, right. I've um, I was contracted by the Cert team, which are the world champions, which is awesome because it's a long time since I've ridden a bike with a number one plate on it, to be the fourth rider. Um, which I was mega excited about because it is a it's a proper opportunity like you know it's oh yeah world champions and all that and uh, they've got Sylvain Gintoli they've got Greg Black and Xavier Simeon so it's a it's a proper team um, but yeah you just don't do anything really like honestly as fourth rider I can't even begin to explain how little you do. It, so what 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 little did you do? So did well, you do a bit little, of qualifying? No, no 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 but did you do like five laps of qualifying or is that it? Or? So. Um, so I did the pre-test, which is two days, basically, two yeah. bikes, and they were reasonably good with me there. and gave me a few laps, but still not still not loads. Um, mm. And then we got to the race itself. So you arrive basically there all week, Monday to, and then I flew home the Monday after. So I arrived Monday, get yourself sorted. Tuesday, there's four hours of free practice in the morning, which I did no riding. Then there's three hours of free practice in the afternoon. And if Greg hadn't have sort of pushed the team to let me out, then I wouldn't have got out. So they they decided to put the second bike ready for me. They put me a set of tyres on that had already done two stints, so an hour and three quarters this set of tyres had done. Sent me out for an eight-lap run. I did nine because I pretended to not read the pit board just because I wanted an extra lap. <laughs> then Wednesday's a day off. Then Thursday is another three hours of free practice. I did two laps. Then, um, then it's qualifying. So this is the only time I knew I was going to get my own real amount of time. So each rider, so there's like red green blue yellow whatever it is you have to you, do a you have laps. your own no you get your own session oh so i get my own session so it's mint so all them boys did theirs and because i'm fourth rider you're the, you're the last one really and then came to my go and i was a bit nervous i'd only done two laps that day prior so i'm up to 10 laps so far got to me and they're like right we'll give you a new tire so i was all excited bridgestone so it's really really different bike to what i'm used to anyway just because of the bridgestones and they said right this is this is the hardest possible option we can run in the race. We need you to, to check to see if it's safe for them to go out on. <laughs> Cheers, lads. So Dude. bear in mind, like, Bridgestones are the hardest things you've ever ridden anyway. You know, in comparison to Pirellis, they're night and day different. Even the soft compound is, like, the Bridget. hardest thing you can ride on a Pirelli. So I was bricking it. But actually, it was it was okay. But I went round, and I was quite close to the guys in that session. I wasn't far off what the other boys did on there. And that'll be impressive because you're all used to BSB ties, so I bet you were like point something off them rather than like I wasn't I wasn't close, but I wasn't far yeah, considering. Yeah. Oh, um and then so that was that I was quickest in my session, which is about the best you can do, hmm. as in, you know, like you can't do too much. Yeah, especially riding with a hard on. 
<laughs> do you not love it whenever like they do it on MotoGP, don't they? He's got a hard on. <laughs> <laughs> I've totally glazed over. This is an inside joke. This yeah, one. No, what? it's just like you never watched the racing. Keith Ewan used to be terrible for it. Go mentioning a hard on. <laughs> Shut up, man! Really, it's all the time. <laughs> Jack Miller, he's doing going well because he's got a hard on. <laughs> oh, class, man. Um, then it's so the, then on the on that night. So we're we're Thursday now. On that night, you've got night practice, um, which was delayed. So it was eleven till half one. Is that the first time you've ridden in the dark? No, I've done them on twenty four hour. Ah, so yeah, but it, so it, it, it. it. Yeah, on oh, spa's really dark. Really dark. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so um, it got to one twenty six in the morning. I was like, I'm hoping I get out. And that's when I got my, I got the last four minutes of the session. So I did three laps and actually for spa, they'd done, um, because it's so dark, they were worried for safety. So they allowed all the teams to have additional lighting. And I've got no idea why, but for my session, they took the additional lighting off. It was like, it was like trying to handicap me. They weren't, but I don't know why, whatever it was, they changed the fairing. So I did three laps of night practice. And then the following day you get another, um, qualifying. So it's Q2 basically. And what they did is they give everyone, all the team, a qualifying tyre. So everyone went really fast in our team. And the fourth rider doesn't count towards the tyre sticker allocation. So I was convinced I was going to get my qualifier as well. But I didn't. They just put the tyres that I had on yesterday. So it was the hardest option race tyre that had already done a session. So <laughs> it, it took a bit of understanding for me because it's weird because you're... Like in, in any form of racing that's not endurance, you used to be in the complete center of attention and everything mm. is revolves around you, especially on your side of the garage anyway. You know, everything you ask for is not like pandered to, but it's yeah, it's listened to and they try to make it as good as you want it and this, that and the other. But, but yeah, being fourth rider, it's a really weird experience in every way because you don't know, one, you don't get many laps, so it's really hard to understand a track that's, really technical and long like spa is um i'm not used to riding with electronics i'm not used to riding bridgestones you know so it's a lot of things that i felt sort of out of my comfort zone with then you want to be able to show that you can actually ride fast so you know you've got to go kind of fast but it's really hard to do in such a short period of time <laughs> then you know you can't throw it up the road because the one thing that is absolutely the biggest sin ever is if you're fourth rider and you chuck it up the road because that's like that's not what you're there for yeah and then finally, it's like, how much feedback do they want for you from you? You know, I felt like I had a lot of information, even at the pace I was going, that I could give that I think would improve the bike. But like, I found myself like, do they want to hear it? Mm. Like, is it too much? That, or are they going to think, well, he, what does he know? He's so slow. You know, like, waste of time saying it. So you sort of like find yourself not quite... In hmm. sort of no man's land. Yeah, yeah. And then... Yeah, it's just, it's weird that, you know, like you've got the, there's three seats for the riders and then you sort of st- stand just out. Would you do it again? Being fourth well, I am rider. doing it again. So I'm it's contracted fourth rider. to it, yeah, oh. for the ball door. But nice. it's, I think now, because I understand it more, mm. then I can accept it. You know, like when I went for the test, I wasn't sure when it was going to be my go, which was almost never. So I basically sat there for two days solid with my earplugs in, with my helmet sat on my lap, ready to go. Whereas... I think all the other fourth riders up and down pit lane were in the coffee shop and you're like, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. in, all so, fen- in all fairness, though. Look at like... that, Christian. It's very keen, no? <laughs> well, he said that afterwards, like the team manager came over and he was like, after the test, he went, well, it's very nice to see that you're always ready. <laughs> Gold star for you. <laughs> in, in all fairness, though, like the fact you had virtually no seat time and obviously all the new uh, variables as well. And the, was your qualifying time like a 21 ish? Yeah, 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 21, like and the, the think, fastest think, lap of the race was a 21. Yeah, yeah. So oh, it's like, uh, yeah. it, it, like and the, against riders that ride them all the time, know the track inside out yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So. Even even in qualifying, so if you take it, that I think there was, was it 40 or 50 entries, 45, something yeah. like that. So then times that by four or three and a half, because there's not yeah. always four riders. I was 15th or 16th overall in qualifying, if, if you put me in the grand scheme of things. So it wasn't too bad, but, you know, like for me, wanting to be, show that i've got an ability to ride it was too far off that i was comfortable with yeah. but then like i said it's so hard to push hard because you don't know where the limit is I, I don't know where the limit is of the bridgestones i don't know where the limit is with 
the track really because it's like we'll get onto it but spa is unreal i did tell you <laughs> and just everything about it you just don't know how hard to push you know when you when you're not comfortable at a pace you can go over the limit so easy can't you did you notice much of a difference with the electronics massive massive so yeah i've not ridden with electronics for uh, well i guess the last time was at le mans when i rode the 24 hour bike there but that was just on standard bmw electronics i was about to say that was on a bm not a that was on a bm but we ran the the road electronics because that worked out okay like yeah. super stock yeah. yeah yeah like super stock yeah so this was on morelli the the cert bikes on morelli and actually, the first test I got to, I just couldn't ride it because in the beginning, because it gave so little power. And I think in BSB, you get used to turning the bike with the rear to finish corners off that it wouldn't give me enough power. So I was like just running wide everywhere. And especially with the bridge zones, I think you turn a lot with the front. And I'm not used to that because that's not sort of what you do so much with the Pirelli that I really struggled. Actually, in the afternoon, they gave us a load more power and I suddenly I could use it. You know, it was all of a sudden I could turn the bike. They didn't mm. change anything chassis-wise. It's just literally how much power it gave. So it was it, it was an interesting thing to do. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's, a hard, it's probably one of the hardest things I've done as a job. And it's stupid because you get paid to go and basically sit in the hotel and have That's a nice breakfast. Do, and then though. I went and got my hair cut. And, you know, like I was so had nothing to do. You know, like watch bike racing. It, it sounds like the easiest job, but actually when you want to be involved and you want to play your part you know i was i, I, I was hoping more. someone got a little bout of you know like food poisoning or something you know like just Bit of the vid <laughs> yeah just <sighs> i kept going you feeling all right you know like, <laughs> just fill them in in the car yeah. park <laughs> just <laughs> well in, in the middle of the night like sylvan who who i think sylvan well i know sylvan was just incredible you know like i watched all the stints and he was just unreal um and then I seen him probably about two, three in the morning. I was like, how is it? And he, he, I think he was fed up of his life really by then. And I, you know, and you, I said, well, I could just put your leathers and helmet on and just walk in the garage with the visor down, you know, just do a stint. Like no one would know. Like literally, as long as you didn't crash it, no one would know. <laughs> so the, And what was Sylvan's answer to that? <laughs> I, I don't think he was too against it, if I'm honest with you, at the right. time. But yeah, you couldn't do it, could you, as a professional team, but... Next time I, I he's got a plan. He's, I but, wanted to do it. I tell you what, you've just boosted the English viewers. <laughs> I'm watching Eurosport now. Going, Sylvan's a bit taller. Uh, what's going on here? <laughs> you know lift lift your visor. Slower. Lift your visor. Lift your visor. <laughs> do you know how they've just spent a fortune on the circuit in order to try and attract the likes of so like the World Endurance and hopefully other big international events, bike yeah. racing, back, yeah, yeah. To, back to Spa. BSB, if you are listening, um, please. Hey, we've been to Assen. Mm. Oh, uh, Spot. Did BSB. you feel? In terms of like safety of the circuit, did you feel like it was like similar to the circuits we're racing on in BSB? Good question. How you've said similar to circuits I've raced on BSB. I thought the question was going to be, do you find it safe? And the answer is no. Then when you said, do you find it similar to circuits in BSB? I guess the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <clears throat> I know that. I know. That, I know. There's like they're, they're talking and wanting MotoGP. I think that the speeds would be. F- no, it's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And there's certain parts of the track where I don't think the barriers can go further back. Yeah. So like the run to the last chicane, there's like a double left. The first one is sixth. Absolutely. You just do not shut off. And I think even in the wet, it'll be a slight roll. And if you just took the front there, like you wouldn't stop till you got to Germany. You know, like it's, there's just no way. And the barrier is not that far away. So it's one of them. It's it's not it's not a safe track, and it's and it's such a big track. That the slow corners are still fast. Mm-hmm. It, you have to. It's one of them where you have to change the perception of speed in your head. Yeah, because it is so fast. Um, you you rode there before the latest safety modifications, didn't you? Yeah, I rode over when when it was dangerous. <laughs> they are sending Herberts and he'll do it. <laughs> I mean, but one of the, one of the so I've I've ridden I've ridden the safe track. <laughs> You're all right there, Chris. <laughs> Just tickle those. <laughs> I, I've ri- I've ridden the safe track. You know, like Oru section or whatever it's called. Oh, what a mate! But I can't what? imagine what that was like when the wall was there. Because oh. like you'd still hit the wall now. Really? Oh, 100 percent. Oh, I, wow. 100% you still hit the wall now. So I'd, you would definitely hit the wall before. I tell you, but all seriousness, so that was a very valid point, though. Is it as safe as what BSB is now? We're like, yeah, in some parts of yes. it. Yeah, no, no. It's, you know, when you put That's it like why that, the question right. was different. And no, it's a good question. A hell is a good question, but I tell, imagine, imagine it, though. But, but it's amazing. It's probably the best. It is not probably. It is the best track I've ever ridden. Yeah, so if, if, if there was a choice between going to Assen or Spa, would you. Would you uh, oh, that's hard because I love Assen as well. 
Go on then. I'd do both, and I'd add Anglesey in the mix as well. So we're going really far now. <laughs> <laughs> I do think we should race at Anglesey. But backwards. I've never done backwards. No, neither have I. I don't think anyone has, but I just... I that just, would be, I'm, I'm that would be interesting. That would be interesting. I think, think, one, of the though, thing, one of the things with um, Spa as well, the danger is part of the, draw. the element of the excitement of it, of riding it. Mm-hmm. I think it would be quite a hard play. You wouldn't be able to fill it. Because the the lap is so vast, you know what oh, I mean? It's designed for F1 and everything like that. But as far as like British, you know, spectators would have such a good time going because you can access absolutely anywhere on the circuit. There's yeah. no bit that are forbidden. You could get in the actual facilities that are there. They've got their own fuel, st- like a massive, massive well, car. I, I went wandering because obviously I had nothing to do for 24 hours. Yeah. So nice haircut, went... by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I went wandering and I got back, I set off at two and got back at seven just because I was just wandered around and it was. Did you see? Did just you see? literally that far, just like it's, I tell it's you what, massive. I tell you what, they did a class job of. So in the run up to the weekend, they did like a big all the bikes, all the teams put one rider and did a ride around the local town. And then right up to the track, and uh, it looked absolutely cla- like such a good idea. Imagine, like, say, if a BSB went to, I don't know, like, I don't know, Brands, and then went for like a tour around lo- the local yeah. area, and like, well, we, into- we used to do that. So I've been down to Chester, so not ridden down, but we're, like when we go to Alton, we've been to Chester and stuff like that on the Thursday. On the Thursday, we yeah. don't seem to do that anymore, but. But yeah, a ride out would be even better, mm-hmm. like yeah, they did there. And the, do you know that, <laughs> that video? Did you see the video of Christian Bernard? Who was was it? Greg Black? No, it Xavier Simeon. So uh, they all rode down in the leathers, and Zav, Zav decided he was going to ride back just in his jeans and his helmet on. But like he was on slicks, you know, like stone cold slicks. And but they had like a police escort that came all the way back, and we followed them back in the car. And they were go- they weren't going slow either. Got to the track, and like this copper. He done Zav, like, but on the track, Zav starts running a bit wide. He's there, like, he's proper nervous. You can tell, you know, like, he's on stone cold Bridgestone slicks with his jeans on, like, doesn't dare give it any lean angle. Just starts to run a bit wide. And this copper goes from the outside, completely does the switch back and does him up the inside. But we were filming from behind. It was absolutely like the most perfect move you've ever seen. (laughs) It was ace. Yeah, it was class. You can see, you kind of like, double double takes, like, what? <laughs> yeah, that was class. So on the other side of the studio, then you know, you know so he was he was well partially performing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Chris, <laughs> Chris was actually a, a, like a massive hand for us because obviously we were commentating from the studio. So uh, to get sort of what's happening in the garage and uh, what's happening sort of trackside, I had a few uh, trackside correspondents. I had yourself, uh, Mark Smith Halverson was over supporting David Shoebridge. Mm-hmm. Who uh, quick shout out! It was his first time doing World Endurance. Yeah, well, he, and he, he did came an and yeah, he came job. and. Um, like introduce himself to me because I I've, I see him in the results in BSB yeah. mm-hmm. in the Ducati Cup, but I'd never really I'd never met him before, <clears throat> so I was sort of on pit lane. He actually came and introduced himself, so and I did so. I, then you keep an eye on what he's doing and did a stellar job. Yeah, so like something like three hours into the race, they they had a three man team. One of them uh, crashed and hurt himself, so the other two had like double stint. The rest of the like they did like nineteen hours. <sighs> And um, David sent us a video message afterwards, and honestly, he looked, he just looked like completely drained. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, they did a mega job, like lap times wise. I'll tell you, who I was surprised at um, when I was looking at the entry list. I, th- I thought the Ducati team were going to be a lot better, like with Forres and uh, Chaz Davies. Yeah, I was expecting them to be like matching the pace of the front guys, and a, lo- a lot of the time they would be sort of five, six seconds a lap slower, which I was really surprised at. Y- yeah, I mean the the Ducati team. I'd I'd been for a. Um... Yeah, perfect. I'd been for um, a meeting with them pre-season because I, I wasn't sure what I was doing and <clears throat> I, I nearly signed up for them. The only thing, I wasn't quite ready at that moment to do, to go full endurance, so yeah. I, I politely declined. Um, but yeah, they're, they've got a few issues in terms of they're pretty much one of the only, I think they are the only top team on Pirelli's. It's a Kawasaki team, but yeah, one of them. Mm-hmm. Which Kawasaki? Is SRC on Pirelli's as well? Uh, yes, one of the top teams was... I, w- well, I was I was keeping an eye on the tyre thing. So that's here. one. <clears throat> and then the other thing that they really struggle with is um, fuel consumption. Yes. So they can, they can do like five or six laps less per stint, which is massive. Mm. So they're already probably five or six, actually maybe more, maybe eight pit stops more they have to do in a 24-hour period which is a minute ago yeah by the time you come in and out the pit stops only take seconds but like 
you're basically out of the race before you start. And, and mm. out of all the teams, uh, the factory BMW team seemed to have something up the sleeve with the pit stops, didn't they? They were getting an extra like lap Get or two lap. pretty much every stint. Yeah. Which um and they were the only, like all the main main teams seemed to have some issues. They were the only ones that sort of just kept out of trouble and just sort of pl- plugged away and obviously they got reward in the end. But um I don't know if you caught and at, before the the uh, commentating on it I've never really been that sort of into world endurance so I had to do like quite a bit of reading up on mm. like all the teams and all that sort of stuff but um, I, I like absolutely loved it it was a, a brilliant race I don't know if I was just lucky and it just happened to be a brilliant race or whether it's always like that but um, it was just like action every sort of stint that I did it was action packed obviously your team had that gearbox problem which to get fixed in 25 26 mm-hmm. minutes was like ridiculous and then also then Greg Black's like absolutely annihilated the bike rode it back with like the, I don't know if you've seen but the clocks were like smashing off the front wheel handlebar was like mm-hmm. down there rode it back to the pits got it fixed and they ended up losing out on the podium by like ha- uh, half a second or a second or something yeah, in well, the end oh, um, like, a, like a just a quick rundown on what happened to the cert team so it was the, a lot did happen in that race like like you said endurance racing is kind of a weird one because it's kind of hard to follow if you don't follow it quite intensely because it's hard to know who's on the bike and who's quick in which team and who isn't, you know, like, and certain things like that. So basically we were winning, or not we, but well, I can say we. Yeah, we were winning. <laughs> <laughs> totally part of that. I was winning. <laughs> I was winning until Sylvan broke a gearbox. Um, and then, so, it, so that was like about 10, 11 p.m., whatever it was, uh, cool. bro- broke a gear off the gearbox. So I've never seen anything so quick in terms of something like that, you know, like, Imagine everything's piping hot. They come in, pull the cassette gearbox out. Not only do they fix the gearbox. Are the Jixxers uh, cassette gearboxes? That one is. Well, it wants to be. I was about to say, because yeah. normally it's like it's only the ZX sends that are normally. Yeah, there. so pull oh, it out. But then the other Im- impressive thing is obviously they're also found the bit that fell missing. out because the missing bit is the bit that's going to end the race, really. Yeah. The broken tooth, you can probably just not use that gear, but the bit inside is going to... It's going to rattle around and it's jam. It's going to rattle around and jam. So, so they found that, sent them out, Jobs a dream. Twenty five minutes was lost, but then you think you're out of the race. But then the race is so long that you're not out of the race. Then um, Yart had a problem, didn't they? They blew up in the end. Yeah. Um, BMW were the ones that were basically away and off in the distance. FCC TSR had a similar issues type of it, not t- similar but similar time loss to us. I think Gino snapped a chain or chain and pushed how to push it back, push it yeah. back. But was lucky because he broke a chain on the run back to start finish. So it was lost time, but didn't. Similar to what we lost. Mm. So we were neck and neck with F with TSR, but like in about eighth or something like that. BMW away with it. But then what happened was the rain started falling. And the Bridgestone runners, which was TSR and, and CERT, were about 10 to 15 seconds a lap quicker per lap than those on Dunlops, the leaders. So there was every chance... That much of a difference yeah, between the Dunlop. Yeah, so there was every chance that BMW was going to get overhauled. They were consistently 10 seconds. That's ridiculous. There was, there was you only, could see it as if they were on have, a... you ran, have you, have you tr- Sorry, have you tried the Bridgestone wet? No. That's but, a but, but it was visible, you know, like it was That's like they're on a different track, wasn't it, Chris? Yeah. So, you know, like you watch it and like the Dunlop runners don't look like they're going slow, but they look like they're nervous Movement. for the conditions. The Bridgestone lads were just like, oh, just unreal, you know, like unreal. Um... So then you think, flipping heck, they've they've had two issues, so have because then the crash happened. So Greg crashes, but basically everyone crashes when the rain came down. Mm-hmm. So we're also lucky then because a safety car came out. So although we lost another twenty five minutes getting back and getting fixed, because the safety car takes about eight and a half minutes to get round, they only lost two and a half laps. So we were really lucky in that respect. Then it's a wet race; everyone carries on. And you think, oh, there's still a chance. You know, there's still six or seven or eight hours to go at 10 seconds a lap. Four laps or five laps is, it's actually manageable. You know, mm. it's, you can overcome that. But then they red flagged it. So that's when it just became basically a sprint race. So what they did is they sent them out behind the safety car and then just decided to pull the safety car in. I think pretty much all the teams were under the assumption, certainly ours was, that the race was going to finish behind the safety car. Mm. but what happened was the opposite and two laps to go or three laps to go the safety car pulled in and it was basically do what you want no one was trying to do anything other than finish apart from gino on the tsr bike and zav who was on our bike because they were battling for third 
I was also really confused because I thought it was going to go off like um, uh, an aggregate. So we were in third by 25 seconds with a gap over TSR. So when yeah. them two started battling, I was like, flipping heck. I know them two, do, I know Zav isn't that keen on Gino. So I thought, that's a lot of effort to just put one up on someone. And then everyone was cheering. You can hear the garage down the other end cheering when Gino passed him. I thought, oh, actually, this is for position. And it was the, probably one of the most dangerous things I've seen because everyone else in the race was going like half speed because all they wanted to do was literally just finish after 24 hours. It was piss wet through and horrible, wasn't it? You know, like everyone was teed totting around on a track that's just had a load of oil dumped on it, you know, so no one knows what, like how fast to go except for two guys who are going absolutely full bore. So the, the, I, it was unreal, wasn't it? Like what a, Class finish. And Christian with his helmet going, I'll go out, I'll go out, I'll go out, I'll go out, <laughs> give me well, a lap. I was ready to collect me bonus money. <laughs> put, put me out there, put me out, yeah, take the me way. off the bench, coach. It was amazing, it, way, it was yeah, cool. It was really thing cool. Is, uh, is the annoying thing as well is in the first hour, if one of the, or after the first hour, I think it is, if one of the cert riders crashed and they dropped to a two-man team, even though Christian's there and his leather's ready to go, the once the race has started, yeah, I think it's an hour, you're out. You, the fourth rider can't join in whatever happens, even if two, even if the all spanned themselves they would have to pull out the race christian wouldn't be allowed out so all, all week as fourth rider so i'd got this like team plan so you, like there's team meetings like two or three team meetings every day plus your sessions i was there for like from the first minute of every session until the last minute of every session didn't really get used every team meeting i was the only one like there on time like sometimes i was the only one there you know like some of them didn't actually happen i was the only one there and then i knew for the <clears throat> For the race, I wasn't going to get used because by the time qualifying's up and no one's spanned, then we're good. So I, I spoke to the team. I was like, right, do I need to be there for morning warm up? Because I booked like a, I was in my hotel and had a pool. I thought, well, I've been here all week. I might as well make use of the pool. So they went, no, you don't need to be here for warm ups. So I thought, mint, the race starts at one. I'll turn up at 11, blah, blah, blah. Because even if I turn up at 11 and someone spanners in warm up, I'm ready to go. <laughs> so I went for a run in the morning, had, had a morning in the pool, and I got there and like, oh, where were you? I was like, what do you mean, where was I? And I thought, flipping heck, I've missed a second. I wasn't. But I'd missed the team photo. Like, there's a photo <laughs> with joking. every single person. Like, even the pot washer and his mate is on this team photo, apart from me. Like, I'd been to every... Si I'd been at every moment for the last week, like, absolutely on hand, ready to go. And your moment apart went... Apart from the one thing they wanted me for. <laughs> I wasn't there. So... <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then I felt terrible, because, like, like, every... Like, almost everyone in the team was, like, separately we're like oh where were you this morning i was like oh, fuck's sake to be fair though like, in, in in terms of like jobs it's not a bad gig really is it like to go out no and... it's not but it is horrendous be, it's, it's, that be, would be that would be, be people painful. listening to this that are like uh, working flat out on a build set or driving You're going, what's the on about like, oh my heart bleeds for christian he, he went all that way staying in a top hotel <laughs> <laughs> watching the bike race and he only got 10 laps <laughs> Flicking through Instagram, going unfollow. <laughs> Bell end click. <laughs> Not I. Yeah, so that so that was my spa experience. So I've got the ball door coming up as well. So I've got a similar experience coming. So it should be all right. So on Bike Sport News, there's going to be a kicked in Suzuki rider somewhere <laughs> in the car park. Well, actually, because they've, so they've got Suzuka coming up in between, and their normal fourth riders, uh, Kazuki Watanabe. But I think because it's well done for pronouncing that. I, I don't even know if you did I that right, but well done. It, no, it was no, good. Right. That was really good. <laughs> but he's so he's riding. So, but I think that's because he's like the Jap in Japan, and he will go fast yeah. as so. Yeah. yeah, and they're giving him a run out. Class. Yeah, I good them. stuff, man. Yeah, I look forward to that. Right, we'll get um, we'll go back to the spider diagram because you've had a good time. You've had a good time. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll just start. <laughs> that was the intro, by the way. People. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. I will, I will just say. I will just say it was like my first time doing the uh, any work like that, the commentating work, and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. It was broken up into like three hour stints, so it did like the first three hours of the race, and then had like six or seven hours off back for another three. And then back is that for your first commentary experience? Yes. Well, I've I've been at BSB. I've been like for the Superstock shootout race. I once did a thing with Jack Burnicle, but it was yeah that like a proper. Th it was the first time doing something like that. I, and, I uh, wasn't going to grass him up, but he did say to me, "So Dominic, I got it easy now. Every time I went in the studio, something happened. It was mint." Well, <laughs> the, I was really lucky because I did the first stint of the yeah. race, which was just like the a short term. The first stay. stint, by the way, because I went and stood in the grandstand, and it, honestly, I've not seen a race like it. And the crowd were going nuts because it was like the top five. I think top five teams were really close, mm -hmm. and I think because. So what it's really important for TV time, the teams really like to be at the front and lead like the first hour is really important. So they do go hard. But also, I think because in endurance, 
you knock it off by half a percent. It's not a lot, mm -hmm. but it's slightly off absolute max. More passing goes on because if someone drops a bit out of the group, they can pretty much make it back up. And, you know, like the, the break zones are a bit longer because you're breaking just a, it's not a lot earlier, but you know, it's enough for someone to have a go. Yeah. So the passing in that first hour was unreal on it, you know, yeah. like, and I, the crowd were going mental. So I was sat in the grandstand at Eau Rouge with my uncle who'd, who'd uh, ridden out and it was just mega, like absolutely brilliant racing. Yeah. And um, I was joined by uh, Tom Gamel, uh, the other commentator then, um, really enjoyed kind of working with him. And like I said, the first stint was amazing. Second stint was um, on the evening. I, I can't remember what happened there, but it was something massive happened and it was like easy. It was like a good bit to commentate on. And then as soon as I got in in the morning was when the rain came. Mm -hmm. So like literally as as I got there, yard, it all kicked off, didn't bike it? blew up yeah. and then it started raining and everyone started crashing so it was like action-packed so yeah really proper proper enjoyed it um the only thing that i found was and i guess this is where the sort of the skill that you have to learn as a as a commentator and which um i think will take some practice is the multitasking so like as you're speaking and the people in f back in france are talking to you on the yeah, headphone. so crazy. It, it would be like now we're having a conversation but then just at random points people are talking to you but you're like halfway through what you're saying and then they'll say like um french and german commentators going for a break in 10 night and you're you're still trying to speak and that that's mm -hmm. quite difficult because the first few times it happened it like freaked us out a bit and it's diff yeah but it, it is really hard to have someone in your ear you know like when i did you've I, done the studio work i've done the studio me. work and it's he's just, been used to it for two years with me so i don't know what he's winching at no but having someone in your ear it's like amazing and i've when i went to do the studio work they said they reduced the amount of stuff that was going to be in my ear set but then during one of the things, they said, do you want to hear what Matt Roberts, who was the lead anchor bloke in that situation, do you want to hear what he hears? And it was just like, just flat out noise, you know, like, so as he was doing his thing, they were going like, um, like a fresh, fresh break is actually where that program carries on. But at some point they're going to cut it in a after show. So he has to actually stop, but then carry on. So they'll go go into a fresh break in one, three, two, one, don't talk, don't talk, and start again. Yeah. But he's not started again because actually on the live show, that's a continuation. That was exactly the same for... for it's me. just yeah. unreal. And so the, then and then he's got saying, then they've got saying, right, we've got an interview lined up with somebody. If you want to go to it, then say, you know, whatever. Or And then it's just unreal. It's I'll, a proper skill, proper mm. skill. It looks, when you watch it on TV and it looks easy, that's because it's such a skill. Yeah. I, t I tell you what, I've got to, I've got to say uh, thank you to Matt Roberts and apologising for letting him down. My one opportunity to be on ITV TT, he went to interview me. I saw it, and I wasn't there. I saw it. I was and all you know, excited. I haven't, I haven't watched a single bit of IT, the ITV coverage, not a bit of it. But everyone has informed me that I missed my moment. So, you Matt, did. if you're listening, fair, my favourite little cause... German stripper, I do apologise. <laughs> but like, it's hard doing a grid walk at the TT in it, where most people are either don't want to talk or aren't there because a lot of people turn up real late don't they just to be to doing be, their own thing and to be fair i, I think what, i so saved he, his so career he did, mind. yeah he did, he did them grid <laughs> walks with no one on it i don't know <laughs> what, what uh you did a real good um interview just before the twin race and it was do you know those moments where you're just listening i was at, up at craig Navarre at the time and um you came on the radio and then you you get like a sort of like hair standing up moment but you you did a winston churchill quote that was, i'll tell you what william 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 hints messages that quote was unreal so it was like, just before the race, to say what you said. What's no, no, cool? No. Oh, I tell you, like, oh, hon, it's um, bit like the counting team. I cannot thank them enough. They blew up like five ECUs. There was an electronic problem in it, and then like wire and loom, and then had the bastardized a seven fifty Z seven six fifty. Sorry, into like an ER six, and the, oh, everyone, even Sugar Tits, was involved. Just stripping this thing. It took us like two days to get it fully done, and I was literally standing on Gang Country Road. Rutter's on his bike, his pattern ready to go, and Michael Rutter, uh, Michael Dunlop's behind us, and I'm standing there with no bike. And they just came up and went, oh, what's going on? I said, look, that you know, if the bike turns up, it turns up. And and they're like, oh, right, well, you know, you seem awfully calm. I said, well, one of my friends told me, you know, a fantastic quote was, um, oh, like, um, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. And honestly, like me, William Hins, who was listening to this snip and skin mouth, he texted me that, you know, before mm -hmm. the TT, and it just welded into me head, you know what I mean? Because, like, it's like leading up to this, I'm thinking, 
am I going to be able to you know do it with my head and blah 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 and all the story there and it just welded in my head and I, I just had a moment there I feel like I was addressing the country <laughs> so I want to fight them on the beaches <laughs> fight, fight them anywhere and I was just like standing there and I tell you what Neil right this bike just wheeled up I had no at that re- moment no, was it I, perfect shit, mate it was something out of a, like a, a budget blockbuster it was fantastic it just <laughs> wheeled straight in it had no rev counter no quick shifter it had no temperature gauge no nothing it missed from the bottom it missed at the top it was like less than a standard map that was in the bike and it was just all off here and it was just one bomb and it just would not want to pull and you know what if that bike didn't turn up on the grid at that exact point i generally wouldn't have been upset because it's so easy to go nothing's going right we'll pack in the accountants it, if someone could generally pump money into the accountant you can't buy what they've got yeah it's grit oh uh, right we there's literally there's there is daylight in the sky. We're going to keep going. Mm-hmm. And you think, with the delays with the weather, that helped us. And uh, like, just in the bike, just wheeled in. And I went, I went off down that road. It was just popping and bang. And I went, I'm finishing this race. Even if I had to put it on my back and carry it over the line, I was finishing that race. And the finish in the top 10, when like, there's like Dunlop's bike. It went that quick past me, it nearly took the paint off my bike. It was like 20 mile an hour quick, anything. And we're not here for that and mm-hmm. it was like it just highlighted what the TT was and you think this is just, just keep going keep going just a top 10 as well top 8 there you are. Don't put yourself down yeah impressive job mm, very good <laughs> um, right let's go on to where we started with the shoulder injury so you've got a okay accent for anyone watching the YouTube you've got a, a very colourful upper arm at the moment uh, do you want to run give a quick rundown of like what happened and why Go on, Dom. No, 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 I just had a daft question, but let's talk about the rundown. I was just you were actually highlighted that you don't really bruise. No, I don't, no, they don't really bruise. And so the fact that you're bruised, that, that says everything, doesn't it? Yeah, That's, I've got a fair shiner yeah. on me on my bicep, so, um, <clears throat> yeah. Probably. For the lady followers. Oh, yeah, just a uh, gun show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one's fine. <laughs> There's a few more followers and we've lost a few at the same time. Um, wait to I'll get just, my toes out. I'll just tell you a quick I'll just tell you a quick story. I'll probably I'll probably have to bleep the name out. Oh of, here we go. Thing, but, here we go. But when I do you know when I was um I was racing super teens years ago, so I would have been like 13, 14. Uh-huh. And my sister at the time was like 17-ish, something like that. And I used to race with <laughs> And um, is that so, the name you're bleeping out? Yeah. So he'd be like, thir- he'd been about he didn't thirteen. Send a picture to the wrong phone. Did he? No, is that he, what you're... he never, he, he never ever used to come and like see me in the motorhome. We would like, would um, sort of peers, but we weren't like close mates yeah, type yeah. thing. And as soon as my sister started coming to the race, and he was like, he would be like hanging about all the time and stuff. And uh, anyway, he came over, and um, he was like, obviously just fancied my sister and was just doing his best. And uh, with a dead, <laughs> do you know, what? he's like quite, he's quite a sort of straight character, anyway, isn't he? And just with a dead straight face. 13 year old he said to me sister I, I got arrested the other day and my sister <laughs> said what like what, like what happened he said I didn't have a license for me guns <laughs> <laughs> oh shit you know that was a true story I remember my sister going back oh in just like crying <laughs> after. the worst thing is I know he listens to the part I'm over the moon <laughs> So even though you bleep it out, he's going to know, yeah. right? Be the there, there's only going to be one. There was Grace. <laughs> oh, yeah, is, but yeah. But on. did it work? Uh, well, <laughs> I presume not. But... Great, yeah. but, no, she, she'll be watching this. Grace, Grace will be on the other side of the screen now just shaking her head. No, no, it did not. No, no, this was Katie. Key. Obviously, oh, right. older, yeah. Well, when I was 13, of course, Grace, Grace sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Three. Yeah, you got, oh, God, He wasn't trying to pull a three-year-old. <laughs> yeah. God. You never know in the BSP. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on. So, Anywho, uh, yeah. So what happened to you, son? What happened to you, yeah? Yeah, probably the most crazy accident I've ever been involved in. So it was a sighting lap. Didn't even make it to the grid. So knock hill race weekend. Um, yeah, for coming to the grid for the first race, um, I, I ran into Josh Owens is the long and short of it. It's it's hard to say anything other than... Oh, so you ran into... Oh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, bless him. I mean, like he came to, he came to the Gary to apologise. I wasn't there. And I think he got told to to leave in no uncertain terms. But I don't think I don't think everyone really understood quite what had gone on at that moment. So citing that is just the point where you come to the grid and then you do then you sit on the grid and do all your fifteen minutes of TV time or whatever. Then you do two sighting laps and and race. Yeah. So it's literally just get to the grid. That's all you have to do. I didn't even manage it. So as I came into the hairpin, um, knock hill hairpin, Josh was there. 
I fully knew he was there. Everything was hunky dory. I usually do quite a fast sighting lap. Um, not race speed, but quite fast. And I was doing quite a fast sighting lap. Um, as I came into the brake zone, he was there. That's fine. He was on the racing line. That's fine too. As I got nearer to him, I sort of half realized he was going pretty slow. slow. Um, but I still thought it's okay. Because my plan would be, if he continues to go slower, I'll just nip to the outside of him. Um, especially when he tips in. Then as I got about 50 meters away from him, I was like, oh, fuck, you know, he's going really slow. Yeah, this is going wrong. Yeah. So you've got the you've got the option of going to the inside, which is option one. The problem is if if you do that and someone going slow tips in, then you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. So I, I hung off that plan to start with. And I thought, I'll just this say... Is, this is... You make it sound like an hour. Yeah, yeah no, it's all in a split second. What's going through your head is incredible. And then... So then I thought, no, don't do that. He's going to tip in. But he just never did. Ah. Because I was going to run straight past. As he tipped in, I was going to run straight past and go straight on sort of thing. And he just never did. So literally at the point that I got right to the back of him, that was... And he never tipped in. I had to just try and dart to the inside and didn't. And clipped him. And clipped him pretty hard. So he went down, I went down, didn't think I'd, well, I knew I'd gone down pretty hard, like my airbag went off, but I didn't think I was overly injured. Hmm. Managed to pick the bike up, the clip on was off it. Um, Josh, give me the, you know, the, what the, what the flip was that? Yeah, because you know, like, usual thing, and I did it back to him, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> so <laughs> I was wondering, because, you know, what, like from when I looked at the tele, because obviously, you know, you don't and then you just suddenly look up and there's carnage everywhere yeah. and I just saw it with a visor up you were looking at it I'm thinking it, my immediate reaction was generally it was his fault I, like, well, no, most, no, no, most no, people from... do and do you know what in a, in a way most people do in almost a, in an unfair way to Josh yeah. as in like it looks like he's for, took me down Just yeah from initial reaction yeah. of how the, it looked on the telly it yeah. did look like that to yeah. be fair it did so for me, it was like a moment of disbelief. I was like, yeah. I've, it's a sighting lap. I've crashed. You know, like, how is that even possible? So I was, I was proper panicking because um, I couldn't, I can't lose points. You know, I need to get to the grid and get sorted. I picked the bike up and um, and the, the right-hand clip-on was completely snapped off it. So then um, I, I knew I had to try and ride it back, but I couldn't get the dash to, to light up. And with the with the frock holding that to your frock as well. Yeah, but the... don't forget, I'd just seen Greg Black do exactly the same as we spoke about just then before. There we are, you see. So I went full Greg Black on the job <laughs> not long after. Um, but I couldn't get the dash to light up, so I was looking all the way around the dash to see if there was like a, a master switch that had that had flicked off. Yeah, but it wasn't. So then I was I was like, "Where's the van?" You're like, "Why won't they?" But they wouldn't let the van out until pit lane was closed because it's a live track. Yes, which is another five minutes to wait, or four and a half, or four by the time I'd crashed and picked it up. So I was panicking like like mad. I pressed the um, pressed the red button, which is like the the main reset switch, and I just saw the like the Motec bit flash up, but then it went off again. Then I did it again; it went off and on. So then I realised like the the red button wasn't staying down, so it wouldn't stay on. That was the problem. Yeah. So then I held it on, and it lit up properly. Like the dash actually came on and booted itself. I was like, oh, brilliant. Then I took my thumb off the red button and pressed the green button, but obviously by taking my thumb off the red button it died again before I managed to press the green button. So I was like, oh, bollocks, I need to hold the red button in the whole time. So this is still on my throttle hand. So I'm like, right, I shouted the, I shouted the marsh. I went, press the green button. So I had to hold the red button and he pressed the green button and it, she fired up. So then finally, after what felt like an eternity, but I was able to start riding it back to the pits. But I, it was just ticko because you can't twist a throttle that's in thin air. Yeah. <laughs> whilst also trying to hold the red button down. Because if I let go of that red button for even a split second, I won't be able to restart because I'll need another marshal to come and lend me a yeah a green button. I take so you, thumb. So, so you, I was trying to do all this on and idle. then <laughs> and then then I was like, it's taking forever because I was just I was just chugging up the hill, you know, like which is only three four hundred meters, isn't it, to the entry of pit lane? It felt like forever. I was going dub, 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 no, but dub, the hills dub. like that, and you're doing that on idle. That's a yeah, it, it, would, it would go, but it just was slow. You uh, know, like whoa, fair play. So then I, I I did channel my inner Greg Black, and I was like, right, he remember. <laughs> I remember what he said about jamming it into the side of the bike. So I jammed, tried to jam the clip on into the side of the bike, and I finally managed to twist it, and it went all whiskey throttle. I went, right. <laughs> <laughs> nearly crashed going back to pit lane. So they got it back, um, and then. The team fixed it real, real quick, and not 
it was absolutely bang on whether you were, we were allowed out of pit lane or not. But I was in the garage waiting and I knew there was something not right with my arm. I could just tell. It wasn't really hurting a great deal, but I just knew. A dull ache. No. I tried to lift it. It was, no, it was more the lack of movement in it. So I tried to lift it and I was like, that, that doesn't want to go. Mm. So I managed to, I lifted it up with my other arm and just rested it on the side of the um, the toolbox and it just sat there and I was like, right, we'll be fine. And then I could see they were just about finished. So I dragged, I dragged the bike out. They, I don't even think they weren't even finished with it. They were still trying to put some cable ties on something as I dragged it off them. Just made it out of pit lane. Managed to start the race, um, but I just had no power in my arm to brake. So as I was braking, I was squeezing the tank with the knees to try and be able to pull the, the brake with my fingers. But I just had no power in the arm shoulder area. Not really through pain. It just was. It just wanted to give way. Because watching them warm up laps, you know, when you actually got back on the yeah. circuit, I thought, man, he's looking tentative. Yeah, well, which it was. is very no, because well, that explains why at the yeah. time. But, I'm but thinking, not, but not through pain. You know, it wasn't. I could have happily ridden with the level of pain it was. It just yeah. was, just wasn't right. So in the end, I, I got not a bad start actually. Made about five or six places up, but then pegged my way backwards. And after four laps, I was last or second last, or and it was just mm. like this is silly, you know, like. I'm not going to score any points. I'm just a danger to other people. It's not on. So I pulled in and then just walked to the med centre and, uh, yeah, just not ideal. So I've broken the top the top of my humerus. Not across. So that hence why I had... Oh, so it's like your shoulder blade. It's a humerus. Your humerus. Gra- so, yeah, oh, right. That, so Jesus. That, so, the reason it, so because it's not across it, that's why I've got um, stability in the arm. That's why yeah. I could ride. So what's happened is at the top, it's... it's um, it's like if you make a fist, it's like that lump area. So right. I basically took took one corner off it. Right. So the reason that it's a problem for lifting my arm up is because it's at, right at the ligament attachment. So mm. it's a bit like having your ligament not attached to the bone. So it's a bit like having your that part not attached to your shoulder sort of thing. Hence why I'm struggling to lift my arm up. So Makes hence why I had no strength. So, yeah, it's now just... Um, because you know what the paddock's like. Everyone's like, oh, he's broke his shoulder, broke his shoulder, broke his shoulder. You know, it's but not, well, there are, it's humorous. Yeah. Now, funny about well, it's not, that. It's not humorous. <laughs> can, oh, uh, God, can I you. tell you something really disappointing? Do you know um, how Danny Kent, your teammate, must have had your leathers on for the weekend? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I can't remember which race it was, but I'd went in the middle of the race. I'd totally forgot <laughs> that you weren't riding, and <clears throat> I'd passed a couple of people, and I, I and I could just see the light, like lightning on the back. I'm closing. I'm thinking, fuck, bloody hell, I'm gonna catch Christian here. <laughs> and then I, I did like a lap behind, uh, uh, thinking it was you. And then I dived up the. In- I can't remember where I passed him, but I dived up the inside, and then finished the race. And obviously he hadn't passed us back. And I literally came back. And I was like, oh, oh, I think it'd be Christian in that. <laughs> and then as I pulled in, I seen you walking up, and you'd been commentating. I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have, you, have you lads ever like, flicked the bird at each other for a laugh? Do you know what? I've actually just this morning I've just watched Daniel Petrucci flick the bird, not for a laugh. Class. Someone else will be watching Motor America. Flick the bird. Give the middle finger. Top Gun. Really? Uh, top Gun reference. Say. You mean you mean in a nice way? Or a oh, in a nice way. way. I tell you what, that's my proudest moment ever. Like, um, funny enough, uh, Super Twin again went out on that first night, but broke down at Uni Mills. I rode the bike back, and then uh, James Hillier was going for a flyer. I came out and uh, coming out of Union Mills and what I saw was James Hillier pull it right next beside me. He didn't even make eye contact. He just went... <laughs> he just flicked the bird and I was just like... Oh, you were laughing at me the other day because I moon. flicked a leg out at you, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, in uh, FP2. So it was, I can't remember who I was behind, but uh, O'Halloran passed us coming over the start and finish straight. Hit the brakes and obviously knock hill. You go... I, I go back to second for turn one. So I went uh, third, second, broke hard. And literally, as I was like tipping in almost to the curve... I made a I terrible just, move, basically. I just seen a build base front wheel come up. So I lifted up <laughs> and kind of like fold uh, well, right out to the curve on the other side but like i was like literally like like the, all the way down let and then once it passed i got back in and uh, it was a class move and uh and then as we were going through turn two just the little leg of like the courtesy leg of yeah. thought, cheers mate <laughs> it, was, it was like a cheers sorry thanks it was like everything rolled into one just a little flick of the leg <laughs> I, I, t- I tell you what this is going to curse me for the rest of forever this without a doubt you know what one of my biggest 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 pet peeves on a motorcycle and you never see you lads do it because you're at the high end of what this country can deliver. You know when someone passes you in a race and then taps the tail unit? Yeah. And that's essentially saying, follow me. It's a race, son. <laughs> 
that is the most Only... in pointless thing. And you know what I mean? Like TT lads don't you... do it. Not like that, but yeah. I tell you, Motor I... three lads do it a lot because they because no. they upset each other's rhythm. I, don't I was going to say. I but... tell you when I've used it is if if in a race if there's like somebody going away and if if we're like continuously overtaking someone yeah. and both of us are losing the chance to get a higher position and then that's but, that's the only then, time I'd use it. No, but in the same breath though, they're trying to do the same as same as yeah. you. But it's it's no, that is a difficult it. one. I but... can see it. So sometimes it's annoying because when some if someone taps the seat at you, you go fuck off. You know, like, you do, don't you? Because I, I, I really I... I'm racing. You know, like why would you tap the seat? But I have had it before where you race against lads who don't think about the the long game. Yes. Like they only think one corner in front of themselves. And that can be frustrating because if you know that once you get into a rhythm, you might be able to catch the group in front, then the, you and the guy that you're racing with will both benefit and just no... by spending a bit of time. So I can see why sometimes someone will go, just, you know, tap the seat and it normally and d- go with. It normally you know, goes with someone with a faster bike, doesn't it? Mm. But someone... someone just I, someone I, who's I... got more rhythm. It's, it's the same. Like if someone who's got a lot of... If you watch Motor 3 and say Foggia past almost anyone, you know, like that person, that almost anyone would always be better just to go, right, okay, I'm just going to sit on his wheel. Whereas every now and again, you get someone who just like at the very next next corner will dive back through thinking literally for that next 100 metres, but not then thinking for the rest of the race. That's mm. the... So it, no, it's racecraft in a way. It, it is, but, but sometimes it's, it's, it's misused. Yeah, and I think sometimes I, people do it as well to sort of... Piss the... Per- like, for me... That to first upset time- the person they've passed. Because yep. it's almost like talking down to someone with, with a hand gesture, you know, like as in, yep. I'm faster than you. Just follow me. Stop being an idiot. Someone I couldn't stand. Honestly, I couldn't stand him. You know what I mean? But he he did it. He just did it to piss us off. And I thought, you do that one more time, I'm going to take your arm off and beat you to death with it. And I went up to him after. I said, you ever do that again? So I, But I beat him in every race. And no, he never ever did it again. And I thought, oh. But do you not now tap the seat every time you pass not, in? Not, you I tell you what, no, no, honestly, not a single person on, I do it. Not a single person I do it to. Not, you'll never see me doing it. I can't remember if you tapped the seat, but there's been a couple of times this year where you, I know you've purposely like helped us out by like um maybe you you would have like pulled into the pits but you've seen i'm behind you and you've done like a lap to like help us oh, yeah, yeah, just, be. Yeah, just, but, but like i know if you tap then when, i'd be like yeah. i'd be chuffed to be like no, to fair, that, for that i would be like as in like i'm going to continue to do a lap at least as in so you know i'm not going to roll off so then it's like come on let's let's try and do something but yeah. to be fair i'm like in a race scenario it's the tap thing but i totally agree with you like it's a respect thing I totally agree so put it bluntly if i'm ever on a track with you christian and you took the tap like you just said there <laughs> to come in front of me and tap the tail unit i'll be like this is this is out time but you, you know what my point is yeah. you know what i mean it's, yeah, 100%. It's, it's it's you just think you f- and he did it to fuck me up and it, and it you know what it worked and i went and i went and told him like so in terms <laughs> of injury wise there's going to be no surgery at the moment you're just going to try and not Actually, heal before brands and just give hopefully give hopefully it'll be okay by then sort of thing. Yeah, I drove down to Manchester the other day um, to see a surgeon that I see not regularly because that makes it sound bad, but you know, like to see a guy Whenever that I see yeah. when I normally get hurt. Um, <clears throat> and he said, if you want to ride tomorrow, then we'll put a screw in it, but it would be it'll be detrimental for anything over two weeks. So. Mm-hmm. The plan is to try not to do anything stupid for the next two weeks, as long as that. So you're motocrossing heals. tomorrow? Are you? Like, you normally like to do like trials riding, <laughs> well, are you, Kyle, scuba Kyle, diving. Kyle you? ride messaged me on Wednesday, going, "Oh, Iron Works tomorrow." I said, "Mate, I can't even brush my teeth. I don't want to get it." So yeah, it's um, the 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 worry for it is, which is one like I don't really need it in a sling. Mm-hmm. Like to be honest with you, this is mainly for show. But it's not not sorry, not for sure, but it's mainly to make me <laughs> re- that out, Chrissy. <laughs> to make me remember not to do something stupid. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's yeah. to protect you to of protect yourself from yourself, sort yeah. of thing. So Are um, you right handed as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um so the it's it's it, the difficulty of the injury is because it's where the um where it's the attachment point, obviously it's almost always wanting to move. Yeah. So it's trying to immobilize that and yeah, it is weird how like do you know if you if you were like an alien looking at human beings, the fact we've got two identical arms and legs, yet one of them's really good Better at everything, than the other. <laughs> and the other, like, you're useless. into this one, and then you couldn't hardly do anything yeah. with the other one. You're like, it's exactly the same. <laughs> I know you try and wipe your butt with your left hand; it just yeah. smears everywhere, doesn't it? It's, it's horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, very odd. Right. When's the last time you tried to chuck something with your left hand? It's so special, isn't it? You know, like you can throw something with your right hand, but then you know. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. Have you ever tried to, just out of interest, have you ever tried to break with your break left foot? With your left foot. Impossible. I do it all the time. 
Well, but I've broken my right, like me, you know, my right foot and stuff like that. But go kart. So have you learned how to now? Yeah, yeah. For anybody that has never tried this, if next, don't do it around with the car cars. behind you. Yeah, don't do it, it with the car behind you. But you'll think with your left foot, you'll think you'll tap the brake and you'll, and it'll just like uh-huh. slam the brakes. That's on. why I do it. Unreal. Unreal. I, no, I, like, but like you say, you can't, you can't, you can't do it while tripping gear because you need to transfer it over for the clutch. But in a go kart, totally yeah, different, true. isn't it? You don't, you don't ever think I don't that. Know why. But you try and do it in a car, you just basically slam the brake. You can't do anything but slam you can't, the brake. You've got no yeah. finesse in it, have no. you, whatsoever. But in a go kart, it's because well, you're quite aggressive off and on. But even so, when the race goes on, you, you can get quite smooth with the whole job, isn't it? It's, yeah. mm. But ambidextrous feet. So, yeah, I'll be fixed for brands. So, we're good. Brilliant. Sweet. And Tap and tail yeah. units all around the track. That's the one. <laughs> we'll give it. So, overall, Knock Hill. Um, the. I'll tell, I'll tell you what, you think you had it. Oh, fuck, my giddy aunt. It was a rough weekend for everyone. Wasn't it? He had to drag me out me cot to go help him out for the weekend. Oh, uh, so, yeah, so FP1, I went for a sneaky wee. Because <laughs> we had a wet free practice one one and I wasn't that so keen good. on going out. Yeah. So I went for went to the toilet and then I seen Chris, he wasn't going out at all. And yeah, he told me the the plight that you'd had that the week on the run up. So come on, boy. Yeah, I've had, um, so it's been a very stressful and difficult weekend, to be honest. So just uh, in the run-up, I was going to be leaving for Knockhill on the Wednesday. And unfortunately, on the Tuesday, uh, I had uh, an email from a sponsor, that like, like a good sponsor and someone that's part of the team as well, not just a sponsor, like a big part of the team. And uh, unfortunately, they uh, pulled out of the, of the year, um, which uh, was obviously like a massive blow to us all. Um, financially and also the fact that he, he was like a, he used to do a lot of uh, kind of behind the scenes work mm-hmm. with the team and to add another complication as well the the sponsor uh, owns half the race truck which is where all the stuff's kept so well, what size is that truck it was like an 18 ton or one so that you're thinking yeah. well you know garage board and everything like that yeah, we've got a like, lot of gear we've got it? like th- i think we've got about three ton of equipment that would take race and and mm-hmm. it, that's just, just his, can, that's just his wallet, that. <laughs> you can put it all in the back of the this truck. So, yeah, but basically, I've managed um, lots of people to help us out. My dad took uh, the Wednesday off work and um, I rang, rang, round, uh, a lo- rang round a load of people that I knew who had vans and tried to just to basically try and scramble as many vans as I could and drivers. Is this Wednesday? Collect the stuff, yeah, Wednesday. So um, I drove down. It was actually one of the Bill Bay sponsors, one of the vans I borrowed, uh, Dick Mountain, down at uh, with Mountain Motor Vehicles. Down Dick in, Mountain? Yeah, down in... Um, that is near Cadwell, basically, Lincolnshire. I picked up this this uh, van, and the reason why it was such a good van to use was because it's got a tail lift, and obviously with all the garage board yeah. and stuff, it would have been perfect. Drove it, like, we drove it like t- maybe 20 minutes and uh, unfortunately turned the ignition off and the ignition carried on running. So I stalled it and basically it, it couldn't get it back working. So that had to be recovered. So then I rang Phil Crow and said, mate, like, are you using your van over the weekend? No. I said, can I please come and borrow it? So I drove over, got Phil's van, then we drove over to Bradford uh, and got my Lundy, my mate Lundy, he lent us his van. So the big, basically bigs like sprinters and crafters and things like that. Um, and then a, somebody else from the team, Stan, uh, used, he's got another big sprinter. So basically we managed to get as much stuff as we could from the truck um, into, into vans. All the stuff was sort of needed. And um, and yeah, obviously lot, lots of sort of stress, before the weekend, um, managed to get the bike sort of midday on the Thursday and then um, drive straight up and get everything set up. And like I say, we sort of roped, it, roped in uh, Dominic to drive. So as well as them three big vans as well, I took my van with the trailer, everything all packed in, ra- like random stuff. And um, yeah, Dom, Dom came and sort of volunteered for the weekend, which was a massive hand as well as the rest of I was team. walking around like a shit myself because I could barely walk. It's funny as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so yeah, my dad and Stan got up on the Thursday morning got everything set up and by the we we got up there like midnight on the thursday and um the night before i was i was away on the road i couldn't get a hotel anywhere so i ended up sleeping in the back of a van with no bedding so like basically didn't sleep the night before so yeah it was like such a stressful build-up but it would it honestly felt like just to get there on friday morning and to have, have the bike in the garage with all the team there <clears> and um like ready for i didn't go out in fp1 because it was wet but to have everything there and things it honestly felt like a, just a victory just to be there um but, so yeah i was like really chuffed and obviously 
the other end of the weekend as well. So once we packed everything away, got home to then unpack everything, had my, my physio, SJ, came over and helped. Obviously, Dom was there, Stan, my dad, uh, got everything unloaded. And then we had a problem with, we've got all these vans all around the country. So then on Monday, I had to... Um, my, my dad, bless him, didn't get... We, we got packed away for like 1 a.m., then back up at half five. My dad went to work for the day. And then when he when he got in at like 5 p.m. at night, I said, I'm really sorry to ask you this, but um, can you please drive a van down to Lincolnshire for us? So, so we got down there <laughs> for about mean? like 9, 10 p.m. Yeah. And then I was... Speak, I then had to go to work in Coventry speaking to my dad he didn't get back to like half two, I think it was half two that morning and then up again for like six to go to work so not I played like a sort of small part in the in the whole thing of to getting there, but the amount of help that I had from um, lo- like loads of people, it was really really sort of humbling. And uh, yeah, I was like very 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 um, grateful for all the help. Another sort of complication, and it'll affected loads of people from BSB as well. One of the flights that from Edinburgh to Gatwick was can or to Heathrow was cancelled at like ten p.m. on the night. So one of my mechanics, Kai got to Edinburgh to get home for work the next day. And um, there was basically a full plane load of BSB, like riders and mechanics that couldn't couldn't get get home. So they had to hire cars and he didn't get back till half four on Monday morning. So so, yeah, so shout out to all them people. But yeah, it's just one of them things like the, the... I think racing in general are like people who go racing, they're like a very sort of resilient group of people bunch of idiots a uh, bunch of idiots and do you know when it's not <laughs> like at all costs do, do you know if you had yeah, to, yeah. if you had to like describe a, the job job description of being in a race team to someone people would think like them hours and it doesn't really like sound but when you're passionate about something and love something you just kind of do anything yeah. to make it work you know my favorite thing about this podcast is we're just two polar opposites here isn't it? We described the struggles of it, and then Christian's struggle was um, getting his hair cut and <laughs> having a walk around Belgium. You know what I mean? Like I, know, I was getting paid to terrible. sit there and smoke cigarettes, and like Chris like, "Oh Jesus!" In all, in all fairness, like, it, it was like yin and yang, kids. On, on track, on track, it was like a re- for myself. It was reasonable weekend. Uh, finished all three races, which was a good start. I, we didn't test at Knockhill because um, the whole team was over in the Isle of Man when the test was on. So. Um, sort of fp2 was the first kind of run out in the dry um sort of improved the bike worked with i've had mark hannah and simon my electronics guy sort of improved the bike quite a bit over the weekend he's um, a nice lad that mark hannah bike. oh he's absolutely sound yeah um and simon <laughs> you made it sound like <laughs> yeah, just one of them. He's... <laughs> and simon <laughs> give me a break uh, but yeah we've got um <laughs> First race, just kind of, uh, we actually had a, a bit of the bike that was uh, came unloose, so it, I sort of rode around a problem and just finished the race that one. Second race, so the first one on strong. Sunday, was, race yeah, was strong. decent. So I was on the back of Sykes for like most of the race. Uh, Taz, obviously, after the big crash, he had started from the back, and he he passed us like sort of later on into the race, and then as soon as he passed Sykes, he kind of. I took Sykes with him a little bit and sort of I was a little ended up a little bit in no man's land like two seconds everyone two seconds behind but a strong 12th to be honest that was the that was massively the highlight of the mm-hmm. weekend coming back into the garage everyone was so chuffed to bits with that and uh, yeah I was really pleased with it and, then, and in the 47s yeah dipped in the 47s as well which is yeah I was happy enough with that and then uh, yes the last race on Sunday wasn't very good but is what it is um, overall yeah d- decent weekend and like I said f- for all of that when I was thinking about all the effort and all the miles and stuff for like four points <laughs> it's like you think is it really worth it but for me it is and I think kind of th- this whole season to be honest is like a massive sense of like a purpose sort of I like feel so motivated and so like we've got this like huge task it's almost like an impossible task mm-hmm. but the fact that we're all working towards something and like have something to go at um and obviously there's like there's so many people behind the scenes that help obviously there's the team which is pretty big in itself but then no i've, I've run that like the supporters wall so there's like loads of people that help us out of there and obviously all my sponsors and stuff so it's um when we do get good results it like really means the world to us so yeah I'm you, I mean, you say just four points, but it's like not to be sniffed at, and everyone's got their own goals, haven't you? Like everyone in any kind of racing, that yeah. Well, but, my, my to goal be, is to be fair for you, just points. just for you to have got out in in not in FP one because you didn't want to do it, but just for you to have turned up was the first big win. Yeah. Never mind the the concept of or the thought process of actually scoring points. You know, like it's 
everyone's got their own like what they want to achieve don't they each weekend so yeah. that was yeah I, I commentated on that middle race and it was it was impressive because it showed you showed you on the on the telly box and it was yeah good to see you riding yeah. and, and like you've just done that and you, you're doing all that and you're sat behind an ex-world champion you're like on a, on a on an official bike you know and there's you who's flipping not slept for two nights on turned a stock, up in 12 on a bands, stock engine on a stock engine on a bike that's you you know you've got great people behind it but you've not got full-time people behind it is do you know what i mean yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's impressive like more, yeah like yeah, i know what you're saying but um yeah so all, all in all and we've got a decent break so, now till so you're Brands both over you two are the only bsb people that are over the moon for the break everyone else is chomping at the bit yeah, you're, yeah, like, I you're like i need 10 minutes and you're like can we stretch it just a little bit <laughs> yeah. but no it's good that you're both ready to go for the next one though we're looking forward to seeing that mind looking yeah that's it and obviously it gives us a good time to um I, I haven't like been off the phone this as soon as I finish work on a night time I've just been on the phone and like on my emails and stuff trying to get uh, things sorted and um, yeah get, get all ready for next year and is that going to leave you in a difficult situation for the rest of the year or have other people stepped up or do you need people that, well I'm going to say it for you I think if there's anyone out there listening to this now who wants to help out Chrissy, for God's sake, please yeah, get in one, touch. It's one of them things where obviously we've we have got some um like sort of the the brand in that the sponsor had is that now up for up for grabs if mm -hmm. you like. So I guess my job before the next round is obviously I'm trying to replace the the lost yeah. amount of uh, sponsorship money. So, but yeah, it's one of them things. It's um and while we're getting on the harp strings, if anyone's got a front end for a BM, that'd be it. <laughs> That would be Dom's really, really appreciated if someone could get like, get me a front end for my BM. But anyway, continue. Anything you want? Anything you want, young man? <laughs> no, I think I'm all right. Good on, man. Just, uh, just on that on. Top, obviously <laughs> talking about the your crash from the TT. What exactly have you? What damage oh, have you done? God, I no, no. The list is growing rather than shrinking. Put it that way. So no, it's um, it's it's like everything. You know, I can get a few things straightened out, but I don't. You know what? I don't want to. You know, I'd rather do the job properly, get it fully rebuilt. You know, so I, like um the forks, uh, both stanchions are bent, and it's, like the frame itself is all right, which is great news. It's unfortunately when it's dragged, like when I've clipped the wall in my arm, I just dragged the front end down, so the bike's gone in forward. So the wheel itself is fine. So the front subframe's gone. Electronics are smashed, and then it's just the front end of the bike is just taking the blow. So it's the yokes that are bent, the forks that are bent. So, um, unfortunately, I spent last night with a bottle of wine, crying into a laptop, <laughs> looking at motorcycle parts. I'm like, oh Jesus, what? But no, I'm gonna fix it, get it up and going properly. Because um, basically, if I don't get me full factory ride um next year, I've got a bike there. That's my plan. Kenny and um, <laughs> going on. very optimistic first plan there. So yeah. and the injury is going to fix as well. Yeah, but no, like like you said, no, mine's nowhere near as bad as that. Far from it. And like like you know, it's only well, I've got fractures. You know what I mean? Rather than like proper. Bro well, like, no, that's all. I don't even know. What, I don't know the difference between a break and a fracture. Is it not the it's same? It's got to be in the dictionary. That must be got to be in the dictionary. But all of mine, are, like, there's no surgical intervention needed at all with mine. If you mine either. No, but you could, you know what I mean? So if you want to get back on a bike. hit a wall, I only hit a Josh Owens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call him Glenn from now on. They are Glenn Ellie. All right, son. <laughs> That's class. It's like hitting a wall is pretty big, you know. Yeah, like... it's just, it, nah, just want to, but uh, I'm just thinking about my poor bike. But everything fixes. Um, unfortunately, I'm out of work at the moment because putting on a, a harness and yeah. I tried firing up a chainsaw the other day. And uh, I tell you what, it was just like, you know, when you have one of them inside screams, you just stop where you are and I just put the saw down and just sat down like why did I try that? So um no um yeah currently currently this is this is my full time profession at the moment. Just <laughs> podcasting on a Saturday with Christian and <laughs> any any updates on your eye? Are you getting surgery for that? Yeah, so uh, basically I need I need the surgery on my eye. Um unfortunately I'm absolutely devastated because I'm gonna have to miss the Southern one hundred and I'm gonna have to miss our Moy road races. I absolutely love the pair of them and Armoy in particular this year because I'm leading the Irish Super Sport Road Racing Championship. And unfortunately, the last round's at Armoy. Okay. So bugger. It's just one of those things. One of those things. But Scarbados is apparently going to be making a return. There's no official statement on that. Um classic to ET we should make them like get there for, but depending on the eye surgery as well. So and unfortunately. We're just Chrissy. I've just seen Chrissy click onto the Bennett's website. There, I'm still going to go down to the track day at Cadwell Park on Wednesday the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. So I'm going to still go down there and talk and talk shite and bore everyone there. But um, 
yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to be out of action for a bit. So I, I've, there's plenty of time in my life to work. You know, I'm not worried about it. Like, you know what I mean? Once I'm fixed, I can go back to work. But I'm, I'm struggling with the pennies at the moment. But these things happen, man. These things happen. And um, I, I tell you, sorry, sorry, what? I was just going to talk about Knock Hill, but go on. Knock Hill, I was, about to say, I was actually going to bring up the other point of Knock Hill. Rory Skinner. Mm. Was that what your point was? I was just going to talk about BSB in general, but we'll start with that. Yeah, so uh, obviously he's going to have a good weekend and he's just been rewarded um, with, is it two? Two, two wild cards. Two wild cards. Oh, two. two. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So he's doing Silverstone and Austria, but I think uh, slightly unfortunately, I think Silverstone comes first. Yes. Why but, unfortunately? Well, just because it'd be lovely to, to ride the track you know. I don't think he'll know Austria very well. I'm sure, I'm sure he'll know Silverstone better. Yeah. So that's all I mean. So, you know, like if you can mm. almost have a, have a warm up round and then, because mm. those guys are so fast, like no matter how good Rory is, it's it's never going to be easy just to jump in onto a completely different type of bike on completely different tyres. So it just would have been nice if Silverstone was the second one. But yeah. regardless, it's unreal. I mean, um, he's, uh, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's managed by john hopkins and the american racing team anyway yes, yeah so that's where this whole connection comes through which is brilliant you know to have that kind of connection because he was on the he was on the telly saying like you know about he's the next like british hope and yeah you know, that, that's what this country needs man we need we need people like that pushing which is outstanding yeah it's yeah. great it's great that he's getting an opportunity and uh yeah if you go off other sort of british wild cards that we've had obviously jake had a wild card a few years ago at silverstone and um kept taz, it. taz both mm -hmm. and the to go into a championship so competitive on a bike that you're not familiar with, if you're not last, if you're anything other than yeah, last, you're doing a very doing really good well. job. Yeah. It's a, so in terms of expectations, you know, as as much as I rate Rory and I really hope that things go well. If it's if it's a bit wet, I think that gives him a great chance to shine. Um, but I hope it whatever, pisses down the but that's the hard thing because looking from the outside, like he'll go in and unless something incredibly incredible happens, he is going to be near the back, and then. Those that aren't really in the know go, oh, he's shite, you know, but it's not the case. You know, it, no. these things do not happen like at the flick of a switch or overnight, yeah. you know. And yeah. But I think we, we, it's not too bad because those in the know, th those that need to know, know that. So, yeah. like, he's obviously been watched over quite closely from people that are important. So, S Good. Saying, saying that, if you remember, Fraser Rogers had a go uh, just over a year ago at Portimao mm -hmm. and w wasn't last. He was fed. It actually went really well. Yeah. He'd, he'd hardly done any riding before that. Exactly. And, um, and amazingly, Fraser's actually been sat out the whole season. So like this, I remember the beginning of the years, man put a thing on Facebook saying like this time last year, he was on the grid with, and like named like the top more two riders and like, like holding his own yeah. like you would say and then this year he's not had any bike action whatsoever so he's like still sat on mm -hmm. the sidelines I think he's one of those riders that's obviously good enough to fit into any sort of team in any championship in the in the UK but there just isn't an opportunity yeah. at the moment but so. it's, just, it's just really cool to see another person get another person go through so yeah. that is cool I mean BSP this year has just been I remember doing the you will have done it as well the um like you had to do your predictions for who's going to get into the showdown. And I think yeah. from what I can remember on mine, I think I'm quite a long way out because it's just, there's riders that are just not performing. There's riders that are overperforming. My, mm. I, I had a strong prediction and a, and a, my outside bet, my outside bet's doing amazing. My strong prediction's doing terrible. If you remember rightly, I said my strong prediction was Leon Haslam. Yeah. Which can you remember? Mm -hmm. And I said my outside bet that I think for the championship is Bradley Ray. Yeah. Bradley Ray's leading mm -hmm. and Haslam. So like I, I'm, glad that i'm not a gambling person because i would have lost i'd be massively <laughs> losing at the moment i tell you what it's good to see jason back on a rhythm yeah jason's doing well yeah you? i mean no, you know you know like, yeah. think, you know what i mean it's he usually like, doesn't do very well at knock hill as well so to do with the double there is yeah. uh, very impressive i think they upgraded the the bike quite a lot at the beginning of the season and maybe taking a little bit of time to get on top of it uh but yeah the likes the people that are like doing outstanding at the moment are bradley way lee jackson and Jason's just starting to, yeah. to come up and join join them. Uh, Kyle Ride's having a strong start of the season, mm -hmm. so both OMG bikes. Um, yeah, Lee and uh, Skinner d doing really well. The people that I'm surprised at, really surprised at, are Sykes and Haslam. Yeah, I think everyone is, yeah. um, including themselves. Yeah. Um, but it just shows the level of, of BSB. Um, Haslam, I'm confused at yeah. because he he's not that long away from being BSB champion. So he knows the bikes, the electronics, the tracks. Tom, it was always going to be a bit more of a an uphill battle, I I think, just because it's more going against him. He spent a longer time away from these tracks and, and our bikes. But I'm still surprised he hasn't 
it hasn't clicked with him just yet. Yeah. Um, every now and again, he puts a lap in that's pretty quick, but he, it, it's only ever real early on on with a with a fresh tire, and then it really his rhythm goes away quickly. So yeah, those two, I think from. I think they were pretty much on everyone's list of who might, who will probably go in the showdown, regardless of what we thought anyway, because yeah. just because of the experience that they've got and, mm. and the teams that they're with, and you know, I think they're both a big, a big surprise. Yeah. Um, it, Perfect time. I, um, I put a thing on our Patreon page asking for questions, and I got this one sent in. I had a little look, listen of it just before the show started, but it'll sort of fit in well. So this is uh, Julian, and hopefully, good morning, gentlemen. Hope you keep him well. I uh, hope that uh, Dom and Christian are mended from their recent escapades. Um, I'd just like to say uh, I've very much enjoyed Christian and uh, Chris's recent commentary work. Um, I like sure him. which of you's got the best face for radio, but time will tell. <laughs> uh, I have a question for Christian regarding the PBM Ducatis. I guess outside of the team themselves, uh, he's best placed to comment on, on the bike. <clears throat> Josh Brooks um, recently said that you know the bike had improved, but the rest of the field had moved ahead of them. Um, I was wondering what Christian's thoughts were on that, uh, especially given that he was quicker than Josh all of last year. I really like him. Uh, <laughs> do you think that they're failing to unlock the performance of the bike? Uh, and I was wondering if you noticed anything on track when battling with them which sort of would give an indicator of where they are cheers good question cheers question. Julian, I, mean, I liked him till the end until when I've been battling I mean I've been so far ahead of him it's unfair. I've not even seen him <laughs> <laughs> no so <laughs> no basically he's sort of hit the nail on the head and apart from I'd, I'd, I've heard that comment from Josh that they've improved the bike but everyone's moved on I don't know what they've done to improve the bike because from my understanding, they've got nothing fresh anyway. So if they have improved the bike, it's only setting, not like part. some part. Um, but yeah, this year, the the at every track, Knock Hill was a slight exception, although race two, as in race one on Sunday, did go crazy fast. Um, but every, every round so far, the, the pace has moved forward quite substantially, given that, Actually, no bikes really, apart from I think O'Halloran, like you said, the McCams bikes, O'Halloran and McKenzie have had some slight upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, but more or less, all the bikes are the same. Mm -hmm. You know, like the Kawasaki's the same, you know, like the OMG Yams are the bikes from the year before. Um, the Suzuki's are, are the same. I know we've got nothing that they didn't have the year before. So the Ducatis, from absolutely all my understanding, is they've got no extra parts. So everything's the same. So it's really strange that at certain tracks we're going half a second a lap quicker on average, which is massive. You know, like in this game, it's massive. Well, you yeah. bust a ball for a tenth of a second. So half a second every lap is just—it's mind blowing. So yeah, the the pace has moved forward, and I do think that actually, from what Josh was doing compared to last year, he's moved forward as well from his lap times. Um, but it's as if the the goalposts have moved quite a lot, and I can't quite I can't put my finger on what that is. Mm. So normally you would say the tires are different because that's the only difference. Sometimes you get it that a track rides quicker on a weekend and not on another weekend. But four in four on the bounce is strange. There, there's a, there, there's something hidden there. There's isn't something there? hidden. So my only th thought process that it can possibly be is that although the tires are not different, they might have changed the process in which they make them, and something has changed because. You reckon it's really down to the tire? It's the only thing that touches the ground. Yeah. You know, like yeah, you can. They are. <laughs> it, it's it's strange that every single bike on the grid is going faster. Every single rider on the grid is going faster than they did before. Mm. It, Grip. That doesn't just happen, other than if you put an outside factor into it. So I actually think that the percentage change is the same for everyone, more or less. Mm -hmm. So just, just from my take from being on track. The only thing that I can like clearly see that was um, where I could see, say, Sykes losing mm -hmm. to, say, McKenzie was when McKenzie passed us both. Around the whole lap, it was pretty sim similar. Pay. Like when I was watching Sykes and Taz, they were yeah. like more or less matching each other all around the track. 
until we got to the hairpin. Mm -hmm. And then, and I don't know if this is a riding, a riding style between the two of them or whether the bike's allowing Taz to do something that it's not allowing Sykes to do. But as we've sort of got into the hairpin hard on the brakes, the, the sort of mid corners on the edge of the tires, that sort of speed, the would do a full lap and would be all like them two would be sort of together and then from the hairpin to the start finish straight there was like i would say two three tenths yeah and it all seemed to be as soon as we're into the hairpin taz seemed to carry like an extra like four mile an hour on the edge of the tire and accel where sykes had like sort of stopped and then sat the bike up so as taz is accelerating on the side of the tire and yeah. pulling away sykes was like waiting to pick the bike up and then once he picked the bike up there was a good a good gain that's the only thing that i could visually see that was and that is that's pretty much what you like what you describe is pretty much the big difference between the ducati and the yamaha you know like when i rode the ducati it's definitely a very much brake hard brake deep turn it get the bike stood up Fire. and go again i've never ridden the yamaha but from every everyone i've ever ridden against it's like a lot of corner speed and a lot of tractability at high lean angle mm -hmm. so yeah the they have their strengths and weaknesses don't they that all the bikes do and i think if you watch even world superbike the way that bautista rides the bike it works so well for him because he picks the bike up so well that that bike's never at as much lean angle as mm -hmm. what a lot of the other ducatis are so i think the ducati struggles on Anything where you have to accelerate from slow speed up to high speed and continue to lean angle, that's what I always struggle with. I think it's only down to the fact it's got a single-sided sided swing arm. Um, I think they have to put so much rigidity into it because it's of the way it has to hold the wheel mm -hmm. um, that it's just, no matter what you do to it, it's always going to be stiff. So it therefore doesn't pick up as much traction as anything else. Yeah. Um, and I think the way that the Yamaha makes the power... So the cross plane crank is the its probably strong point and the ability to it seems really settled from off brake to on throttle yeah the, the yamaha never seems to get unsettled at that point whereas a lot of other bikes you see the rider has to do almost break the corner down into sections whereas yamaha riders and i've never ridden one so it's not like it's only from perception would you like to ride one yeah of course yeah. like as in just to just to see yeah yeah i'm very happy with my suzuki but you know like Oh yeah, just, no, I'm not. I'm, trying, I'm, not I'm just trying to trip you up. You know what I mean? I'm just like, you know. But no, it'd be interesting because like, because I don't know. But it's just from everyone that I've seen that get on that bike suddenly picks up sp speed in a certain place, and we've seen. But Kyle and Brad, well, I was just about to say, we've just seen how certain riders, when they get on a different bike, I think with Kyle and Brad, two things have happened there. One, they've got onto a bike that's better because I think those Yamahas obviously they won the championship last year but also it suits their riding styles as well. So Kyle and Brad are both like real corner speed people that, that get on the gas early and sort of like roll that speed round. Mm -hmm. And that's working really, really well for them. It, it, I've said it so many times, but you know, like motorbike racing, you're jockeys. So you ride the horse that you, you know, don't matter what jockey you put on a Blackpool donkey, you're not going to win the Grand National. Mm -hmm. But the other way around as well, if you put a bad jockey on, you know, red rum, I think it's dead, but it doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? You're not going to win either. So, yeah. and it's about matching, matching and marrying those things up. At the moment, it seems reasonably clear that the standout bike is the Yamaha, and we see that in multiple championships around the world. Yeah, top. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, BSB, Mot Mot America. America, World Two Bike, a little bit less, but you still see it. It's there. So that's a different, that's a different kettle of fish, really. Isn't so it? it just seems that it, they've they've got something good. Going going off last year to this year, the sort of the people that have moved the most. Um, in, in terms of Danny Buchan didn't have a very usually really strong at knock hill. Yeah, uh, I think he was like, a bit disappointed with his knock hill. Yeah, usually a podium. What, what, he did usually a podium double win last year, didn't he? Yes, and um, yeah, he was, I can't, I, I don't know ex his exact results, but he wasn't challenging for the yeah. podium anyway. Um, so he, I think he would have been disappointed. Lee Jackson has made a Big massive step, step forward. Massive step with Jacko. And uh, yeah, you can't do anything but take it hat off to him this year. Yeah, and the, the team, they're doing a, a fantastic job. And uh, it's almost like the the Yamaha and the FS3 team there, the, like the standout. Yeah, the bad thing is when you separate them FS3 to any other Kawasaki <clears throat> in any other championship, they proper stand out well, them. FS3 bikes, they've... they've, they've 
Speak, f- speaking the, of Kawasaki, I was also going to give a shout out to Storm Stacy as well, who yeah, made a big, brilliant ride, big step, yeah, brilliant rode, ride, rode really well at Knock Hill, and that yeah, the results actually didn't re- reflect it. Yeah, yeah, at all. Uh, it was actually Haslam that crashed, that sort of took him out, of, yeah. and he was on for a good result there. Yeah. He was really high up in all the practice sessions, mm-hmm. and uh, they've made a, a good step, and that's off off the back of like last year when I was in the I was riding a super stock bike, he was in the super bike. He, I think, he had one crash. At he's consistent uh, in like he's, intestine somewhere yeah. at, at um, hey, Donington at the beginning yeah. of the season, Prano, and just... aside from that, he did nearly the whole. I'm pretty sure he, he might have had like slipped off once or something, mm. but I think more it was or less in the wet or something oh, like yeah. that. But he got little shitty thing, you know. Skin actually lifted him up and like sort of knocked him off at, at Cadwell. But aside from that, he's like virtually never crashed. Where this year, he's he's came off the back of a lot of crashes at uh, Silverstone again at Donington, two or three at Donington, and then to come out. You would have to say on the back foot after so many crashes and to put on a performance like yeah. that was absolutely incredible. He's learning. He was like right up top mm-hmm. top three in practice um, and doing an outstanding job. Mm-hmm. So I, obviously they'll it, him and the team will be uh, really hoping that they carry that form onto the Definitely. next round. So uh, I, yeah, think, I think actually going back to Skinner, I think he had a disappointing knock hill. Mm. But I think there was a lot of pressure piled on him. Definitely. Whereas 12 months ago, like... Um, I had a good knock hill and then but race two and three I was in a in a battle with him in the front group and I think he led for like 25 of the of the 30 laps of the race one on Sunday and I followed him for the whole time like 25 laps and he just never put a wheel okay he's a wheel's always out of line with Rory but like controllably out of yeah line. you're not you're not holding your breath when he does it yeah. whereas actually when I watched the racing because obviously I wasn't involved in it but when I watched the racing at the weekend he seemed a little bit more desperate to impress not impress but it bit more desperate himself, to, yeah. to lead to be at the front to what's it where because so i actually think he had a less impressive knock hill this year than he actually did last year oh yeah definitely, definitely. um it's matt you know in, mm. in motorbike but, but, that, but that expectation is that weighs heavy yeah it's it's not it, there's nothing like linear about it you never know like so like this time last year rory was like 19 lee was 25 and rory was like uh leading or leading the uh-huh. races and things you'd think one year on, you'd think w- what's actually happened is Lee's made a he's uh-huh. he's like five years older or whatever, but he's the one that's made a massive jump, jump. And that that race where they were battling on the last lap, and he did him into turn one. Yeah, and then he's feeling you know, it. No, the the lap before as well, when Skinner then did him back into turn yeah. four, and the so like that's like a dangerous place to, to pass. Big time. So to do that on your teammate, and then for Lee to get the better of him at his home track, is you know like you, you can't. Like I say, you can't uh, do anything but take your hat off to him. He's doing mega. Um, and it's it's one of them things, like, I think me and Leo are, like, the same age and we've, from, like, super teen days all the way through, he's always been one year ahead, but we've more or less went through. And there's been a few times where he's, he's like, sort of... <laughs> Like, well, he's always been like the nearly man. Like he's just been hovering around, you know. Like well, I was go- so when we first stepped up, the- he stepped up to Superstock Six Hundred, and I think I was on- either on a one on a one two five. And the first race of the season, he got lapped by Jake Dixon. Mm-hmm. And at that point, you think, wow, like he's like that's the progression. But as soon as he's like on the back foot like that, that's when he comes out at his best. Mm-hmm. And he came out and he won he won that championship that year after getting lapped in the first no race. No way. Yeah, at Brands Hatch, you can look at the results. And same again, like th- this year, like it fe- it's almost, you feel like he's on the back foot and that like Rory's going to take the limelight. And he's, he's just, he's such a determined character. And he always, when he's like, put down if you like or like uh-huh. things that's when he comes his best so like if I, it's almost like if you were if you were his coach you'd be like sort of telling them how like how everyone thinks you're shit and, <laughs> and he'll win the championship because that's he, he that's when he comes at his best but i don't and think he's I don't riding, think, he's I don't riding think so anyone well foresaw how well he was going to ride this year but that's that's like the key to like when, when he comes at his best when people uh-huh. don't when people sort of write him off or i mean at the beginning so of the season this like i'd love to see how many people have got him on that top eight prediction yeah Mm. Yeah. I don't think that many. So by as good as he is, I don't mm. think that many. Whereas now, we'd have to look back. I don't think. So we, hold on. So we, hold on. We, we did a top eight prediction, didn't we? I think at the beginning. And I don't know if I, I can't remember if any of us put Lee in top eight. I don't think I did. He could easily win the championship this year. Uh-huh. 100%. So by default, he's going to have a shit year next year. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but certainly, just certainly, it out certainly the FS3 bikes seem to have made a big jump. Yes, definitely. Both, both of them together have mm-hmm. jumped. 
which also indicates that a team has made a step as well. You know, yes. like when both as, riders make yes. that step, you know, like if one did, you'd go, "Oh, cool, he's going well." Yeah. Whereas you know, with them. they're going well. I was speaking to Dan the other day about it actually, and he said they haven't. There's not like one thing that they've like made a big step. It's just marginal gains everywhere, yeah. small little little changes, and it all seems to be the, all the, like lots of small changes mm-hmm. seem to have made a massive difference. So, but, yeah. but where the championships at now? You know, like it seems like maybe the first six which I'm going to have to try and reel off the top of my head. I'll get the championship off The first six seem reasonably safe, but then the bottom two. everyone else is, is battling for that 7-8, which is, I think at the moment, probably Bridewell Brooks onwards. So then you've got like Hickman out of it, you've got Sykes out of it, you've got Haslam out of it, you've got the champion Taz out of it, you've got I'll, me out of it at the moment. I'll I run think. through, so we've got Brad Ray, Jason O'Halloran, yeah. Lee Jackson. So them three so far... To, even if they stop racing now, I think we'd probably make it into the showdown in with the points. Yeah, Jackson's on one seven four yeah. points, uh, strong points. Skinner one four eight, Kyle Ride one four one, Glenn Irwin one three four. So Glenn Glenn had a mega start to the season. He got seventy five in the three races. Yeah, so. first three races, <laughs> and then he had a decent round at Knockhill as well. To be fair, so that's sixth. Then yeah, like you say, from there downwards, there's a huge jump from Glenn. So from one hundred and thirty four points, it goes to ninety four with Tommy Bridewell. So you've got Tommy, Danny, Josh Brooks, Peter Hickman, yourself, Haslam, Andrew Irwin. Tom Sykes in that group, mm-hmm. and that, that that goes from Tom Are you Sykes. In the championship? Tom Sykes is four, four, no, I'm on BBC Two. <laughs> Tom Sykes has uh, got forty-seven points, and Tommy Bridewell's ninety-four. So it's not like a massive jump. And then below below them, you've got Taz McKenzie fifteenth, Vickers sixteenth, Storm seventeenth, myself eighteenth, Tom Neve, Dan Linford, Mizuno, Danny Ken Takashi, Josh Owens, Mossy, Delves. Oh, sorry, I'm... I'm you're in the no, no points. Yeah, no, point. no points, yeah. So from uh, Josh Owens down, uh, those are the people that haven't got So actually points. on those ones as well, like we haven't mentioned Vickers, who are, who I think a lot of people probably tip to have a good season, you know, moving to the FHO BMW. Yeah, after what he's been able to do on the uh, Lee Hardy bike yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. Which I think until a few seasons ago was probably not looked upon as one of the top teams. Then I think Vickers and Lee Hardy together, they brought it to a level where, you know, like people really thought of them as something. And then Vickers, I think, moving to an official start looking team. You know, you know the, the FHO squad looks so professional. It is so oh, professional. It, it you know, is, like isn't it? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Seems to have really struggled to have gelled with that one. Yeah. You told me a, a surprising stat just before that Luke Mossy hasn't scored a point yet, which yeah. is really surprising because he was pole, like you said, at the last race last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. So there's a few sort of hanging out towards the back that you think, flipping yeah. it, you know, like if you saw those names, you'd be like, yeah, they could really challenge, and yet they're really struggling the to do anything. The, I tell you what, I don't know why they call football the beautiful game. It's a load of shite compared to this. Yeah. It's, 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 this it's is so the beautiful tight, game, it's isn't so it? Close, it's so you know, it's so. It's about, just to mention Vickers, uh, Sykes put a proper move on him into turn three. He was mm-hmm. like, so and after, sent him off onto after the, the safety car, yeah, yeah he's like fully, fully committed in, and Sykes just put, like lifted him up as he things and put him out on the gravel, and then I think he just pulled him in the pits after that as well. So yeah, he did. effectively, it, it was kind of a weird, race. weird one because. When I was watching that one, and he, I didn't really see what had happened, but it, it came up that the race direction were looking into it, but nothing got done. Mm-hmm. But then it looked almost like Vickers had broke down, like he was in no rush to get back on the track, which was kind of a really weird... I think at that point, he kind of weird to knew see. that he wasn't going to get any points, and then it's pointless risking a crash for no points. I think that probably is. But I know what you mean. He, he was kind of like, uh, what's the word? Gesticulating. <laughs> That's the one. And, um, it's like, yeah, think... rather than worrying about getting back at it and punching him afterwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was like quite a chill. Th- well, I just found that really weird. Really giant. Just I, know what really... you mean. I-, I thought he broke down, is what I thought. I broke yeah. a chain. That's, you know, he-, he took that long to get back on track. I thought, oh, it's a technical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else to wrap up at the. Super, Super Sport was quite surprising. Not, Not really. Jack Kennedy pissed off. I was going to say, <laughs> Apple Yards are usually uh, a very strong team that didn't have the best round at... Um, at no, especially Brad, standard. Especially Brad, Brad Perry. Uh, yeah, but, he, wasn't, he, he had a great round. That was like the, a the making of... Uh, well, but last, last year, year Knock it, he just pissed off. He was away, Brad wasn't Perry he? was amazing at Knock Hill last and year. And also at Donington last time out, he, he did the double... Yeah. He beat Jack I, I know at that point last year the results that Brad was putting in was really putting him on the shopping list of a few people. Yeah. But then it sort of tailed off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that, but... that was Jack on the 636, isn't it? Now that you've got Jack Kennedy on the R6, it just... 
Mm-hmm. It went, well, second that Mar train news got announced, it was just like, well, we just engrave it now. Mm. Wasn't it? You know what I mean? It's... But I mean, like, even but talking about something different, but I think the entries are really down at Knock Hill. Like, yeah, I know they're the down. Travel, isn't it? I know it's the travel, but like, I do think that everything's taking an effect on people want it, being able to get to places. Yeah, yeah. diesel and oh, it's, it's also just give a quick shout out. The I, I did uh, didn't watch it at the time, but I've caught up since on the Superstock races, and I thought they were really good. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we're missing Tim Neve, who was the championship oh, leader beforehand, oh, who's um recovering from a massive crash which wasn't his fault mm-hmm. in testing and um yeah sending our best to tim uh, also your teammate uh, charlie had a massive massive crash early Never. on in the race and the i cannot tell you how lucky he is that he uh, to walk away from it i'll show you a picture and yeah so oh, like charlie, mint, so charlie, nesbitt's, mint lad, charlie nesbitt's riding the vision track bike in if i mean Hawk racing, we had an absolute disaster. Like at Knock Hill, it could not have been more of a disaster. Like Tom Oliver broke his collarbone in free practice one, high sided. Um, Danny Kent struggled all weekend, just never really found his flow and found his mojo. I flipping didn't make it round the sighting lap. And Charlie Nesbitt had a, I think he had a P6 in race one, which was good. Mm-hmm. You've seen the but picture. then Ushi. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it was lucky. That was very lucky. Um, fair play all the people behind them that yeah. yeah and then so Charlie Nesbitt had a P6 in race 1 but then high side that was lap 1 of race 2 so mm-hmm. like as a team we had a terrible weekend but like Charlie Nesbitt is such a um, such a talented lad yep um He's a funny lad, you know. Like he's, he's mint. We, we you know, put like, it down in London. I said, like, to, I said to, the, I said to uh, Steve Hicken the other day, like the team manager, I said, "Oh, he needs a Netflix documentary about him because it's just like <laughs> it'd be funny as you know. Like I'd watch it. Like I'd love to see an insight into his brain. Like, but nothing phase him. Yeah. Um, and fair play to the lad, you know. Like he's he's been doing fantastic, but he does tip off it quite a lot. So I'm hoping that once he stops doing that, you know, he'll be. He's definitely got the speed. He's he? definitely got the speed. <laughs> Sorry about that. We just had a uh, the alarm going off, but. Uh, can, uh, All your bags are still in yeah, there. Thankfully, report that we're, <laughs> like garage alarm systems <laughs> shit up. Well, I've got an say, intruder. Yeah. So yeah, happy good. days, happy days. But I, t- I tell you what, sorry about apologies here because um, I'm actually going to have to dart off very very soon so i'll have to leave well hold on i don't know why i'm apologizing it just one co one co-host is leaving just leave the other two co-hosts exactly. and ramble on which is all good i get time but, and a half from now there you see i could have my wage if, <laughs> if there was a wage bloody hell bloody hell uh, but i'll tell you what before before i dart off um we had we, there was a big a big crash today at kells which actually abandoned the meeting and um unfortunately um as senior support rider uh jack oliver unfortunately lost his life at kells and I cannot tell you enough how loved the lad was and like the lad was going places, he really was. He, even though he was in the, like the senior support races, which means he couldn't contend in like the main super sport and the open, his times were absolutely on the pipe and he was safe, calculated and unfortunately he's um, he lost his life at Kells there, which is um, it's another blow to the Irish scene because there was a huge send off for like Davy Morgan as well mm-hmm. as Jack and you know what the you know what the Irish are like, and they 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 do things properly, and they just hold the sport so close to the heart, like we all do, you know. What I mean? And but absolutely good, and, and yeah, I tell you what, it's um it's it's been a bad run at news at the moment. But Hayden Gibson, um, obviously you know who does our lids, he recently lost his father to a stroke as well. It's just so obviously our condolences go out to everyone, you know, on that side of things, and that that actually brings onto it like a good point, you know, um, like. The Stockton family have actually a, a GoFundMe system, don't they? So yes. I tell you what, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually sign off and go off from there. But uh, Christian, great to see you again. Get well Cheers, soon, man. and we'll catch up catch up from there. Great right? Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm getting this habit of bailing out on you <laughs> lads all the time. There you go. So happy days. Right, catch you lads later. See no you problem. Mate. See you down. See you later. So, uh, yeah, just on that note, uh, so Bradley and Roger Stockton, another sidecar lads. Sidecar lads, uh, yeah. Uh, father, father and son. son. Yeah, yeah so really sad that uh, passed away at the TT. So the there's been a GoFundMe page set up uh, by. I presume it'll be like either the family or somebody from the family. Uh, but we shared on the Chasing the Racing Facebook page. But it's also on, I think, if you go visor down, you'll be able to find it. And um, yeah, obviously, 
that will have left the family in a very uh, difficult financial position. So if anyone does, would if anyone would like to help out, um, just you can find the link. Just message the page and I'll send you the link for that. But uh, yeah, very, very sad news. Um, I did actually have a quick flick through the motorcycle news before we started this, just for a few to- topics of conversation. And uh, one of the big things that stood out is there's been a few big electric bike sales going mm-hmm. on. So Norton have uh, recently announced, so in, in the next, I think it's the next two or two and a half years, they're going to have an electric bike range uh, and invest in heavily in that. And also with Triumph, have just bought Osset. Yeah. Now, is um, no, your mate Matt Late, is yeah. his son, do they ride Osset? Or? They ride, ride Revies, but it's a similar. So I think the, um, I don't know exactly, but the Osset was really based around the trials market. Um, and the Revies is like a scoop bike, but with a little electric motor in. So, um, yeah, like electric's coming or, or other sources of, of racing are coming. I mean, funny enough, actually, um, I was watching the Moto E qualifying uh, or free practice, whatever it was, yesterday, and um, and my other half, like she said, like when, like would you th- when, when are we going to be riding, or when are you going to be riding these as a as a main thing? And I think it's coming really quick, but I don't think I don't think it'll happen as a crossover because then someone else also asked me. In fact, it was Hugh, father in law, said when do you think someone's going to enter a bike to actually race in the main class, i.e. MotoGP? And I don't think that they're going to make one competitive enough to can, to race at the same time. directly at the same time. You know, like, I don't think there'll be that crossover where we went from two strokes and four strokes and there was a there was a crossover Fate. pattern. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think that'll happen. I think it'll be a literally, this is the new rules, away you go. Yeah. Um, but I think the Moto E's now are doing lap times that are like Moto 3 speeds. Um, obviously they're really heavy but they accelerate about as quick as a superbike mm-hmm. not quite MotoGP but they accelerate to 120 about as quick as a superbike so they they set off quick because obviously it's unlimited power but then I think they hit a bit of a wall in terms of how fast they go yeah um, but yeah the um, the Triumph acquiring Osset really caught my attention I don't know why but it just when when companies start to acquire companies that are in a different field almost they're after the technology Mm -hmm. um and i've started working with a with a motorcycle brand that doesn't currently produce um an electric bike but they have pretty much one of every electric bike that there is in in all the world because they just want to understand the technology and where it's going and Mm. yeah it's it's gonna be weird because it's gonna it's gonna happen and i've said it before i don't i'm against it in terms of um i don't necessarily think it's all that much more um environmentally friendly because the batteries have to be t- somewhat done with them they also have to be charged up somehow you know i'm not i'm not entirely sure how more environmentally friendly it is but the thought to me of having a motocross track in the middle of a housing estate because the all you do is make dust but not noise is mega yeah yeah electric the accessibility car. yeah for me is like amazing mm. so I'm, a, I'm i'm happy to embrace it in that respect but yeah to see these big companies you know norton triumphs like working on electric or acquiring electric companies it's so triumph have been working for a while about a motocross bike haven't they yeah yeah um, but that's that's not an electric motocross bike just another, like an, yeah but that's compass. but as well that's outsourced i think so this there's another company actually developing that so triumph it'll be triumph badged but they've got um someone else doing it but i don't know when that's due actually because that's been they've got some big name like ricky carmichael's like one of the faces of it who's like the greatest well he's the go he's the rossi of of motocross yeah in, in america anyway and um yeah so they've got some they've put some big names to it so it'll be interesting but actually there's um there's a motocross bike that's making big waves at the moment called the stark varg very ikea-esque it is scandinavian and if you watch the video for it it's weird because it's um it's a promo video and normal motocross promo videos are quite sort of motocrossy this one's got like a bloke in a in a suit and tie explaining all the details of this bike and it's when you see videos of it and watch it, it looks like it rides like a motocross bike. It's the first time I've seen someone ride an electric motocross bike and they look fluid like they would do on a, on a, on a, you know, an engined motocross bike. So mm. they're definitely making it happen and making it come. But I, I, I just, yeah, so it, it's an interesting and ex, I don't know about exciting, but it's, it's interesting to see which way things are going to go for our sport. Cause yeah. it's going to be a complete change around in what, in how it works and, I don't, think it'll goes be, on. I don't think it'll be that, that long before there's a class of BSB that do something yeah, electric. I don't think long at all. Yeah. yeah, I don't think long at all. I mean, it's definitely coming. And it, I know we've spoke about this before, but I think in terms of um, 
whether it's whether it's better for the environment or not it's, the it's a much easier sell to sponsors <laughs> yeah. and i think if like if we were racing electric bikes now i think you'd be just laugh at, like you'd be it'd be so easy to get sponsor, sponsorship well to every, do it. every every company wants to get on the green agenda because yeah. it looks good and it's yeah exactly. so even if the even if that's completely wrong because your electric motorbike is powered by 12 generators out the back to to be able to do it and the ba- the batteries have got a it's all what it looks like. A 12 month yeah. shelf life and all but then you have to landfill and then actually it's not true but you know i do think that a lot of the companies want to get on that green agenda but for me it's the noise thing yeah 100 percent, it's the noise thing i think when it comes in um like we just spoke about matt like he can take his kids down to like the local park maybe not okay maybe not the local park you would make a mess of the grass but you know like some a local field mm-hmm. and no one's going to bat an eyelid Whereas if you take them down there on your Pee Wee 50 or something like that, or you you know your KX65 is a bit more noisy, people start moaning. Yeah. So it's it's suddenly going to open our sport up to to kids actually more than anything. And if you can get people into it early on, I think it's I think it's mega. Yeah. Yeah. No, bang on. Uh, just in in terms of just a quick few things from MCN, uh, there was the Wayne Rainey's riding at Goodwood. So oh, this, did you see that this week? So for the first time in thirty years since uh-huh. his accident, uh, did you have you seen the video? Of him? I saw the video. I think the first run up to Ed Kenny Roberts Senior behind him. All right. Um. So yeah, um, Wayne was was uh, paralyzed from I think the I think from the waist down, um. And I was actually zooming in at some of the pictures. So what they put is on his foot pegs, they put some um, bicycle cleats on. So that held his feet in. So I guess on the bottom of his boots, he had some some cleats as well. And then they sort of like taped his legs on. And he, he let rip actually on the straights, you know, like, because they don't have tire warmers either or nothing. So he, and that was his first run, he let rip. So I think it was quite nostalgic for everyone to see that. Yeah. Obviously, Goodwood looks amazing, you know, like. But do you know, like, say if you haven't ridden in a while and then like your first run out of like if you go testing the first time you come out of pit lane and then you open it up and you're like yes like we're, we're back in business sort <laughs> yeah. of thing. imagine having a 30 year break in between doing that it doing it in front of all these people everyone wants to yeah. see you do it as well <laughs> yeah oh um, uh, yeah be really cool have you done good with festivals before no never done good one i would i would like to yeah. um it looks if, cool. anyone, if anyone's listening anybody yep. next year <laughs> Uh, and also, I don't know if you've seen the news, but this week Top Rack had a, it was like a sort of private test, but there was a few pictures leaked of it out with Quattro I think, mm-hmm. went out on a MotoGP bike. Um, I don't know if it's, I mean, it sounds like he's not going to get a chance in MotoGP now, doesn't it? But if, yeah, I think everyone would love to see, even if it was just a few wild cards or whatever, I think everyone would love to see just how he would get on. Uh, but, and in terms of World 2 bikes as well, up until the last round, he's been you would not quite as dominant. Or mm-hmm. but saying that this time last year, it took him a while to start winning, and then when he did start winning, he was like he then came on really strong. But yeah, beginning of the season, it's been more Bautista and Jonathan sort of sharing the victories. Um, but yeah, he's, he rode. Did you see the last race? I saw the last the race. Yeah, bikes, yeah. yeah, and like how hard he was riding. Uh-huh. Like it, was, it just looks so far over the limit, and. To be fair, Jonathan looked like he was pretty much on his limit as well, but getting dropped off. But uh, yeah, top uh, like the stop he's he's pulling and like you you watching and you think yeah, that bike ca- cannot go any faster yeah. around, around that course. So fair play to him. And then Bautista just looks in his in his comfort zone. I mean, <laughs> like, like, I mean, I'll go back to the top rack thing on the MotoGP. One, it's just such a shame. So he's he's got a test on a MotoGP bike for absolutely no reason whatsoever. You know, like literally, it's just a thank you for for being amazing, winning the championship. Have a go on this bike. But it's almost like, here's a bag of sweets, you can take two, and then I'm having the bag of sweets back, you yeah. know, like, because he's not going to get that chance. Mm-hmm. And actually, that is going to filter down because um, it probably has implications. The fact that next year, MotoGP is only going to be two yams on the grid. That leaves no space for Top Rack, obviously. Um, and Locatelli is going to stay at Pata as well. So that actually filters down in, in terms of potentially even a problem for Taron, who didn't move up to World Superbike after winning BSB last year. And I don't know if it was promised it as a continuation next year, but whatever it is, I'm sure he f- was hoping that in 2023 World Superbike is be that will be the go. That might leave him really without a ride. Yeah. In that in that respect, he'll never be without a ride, but as in to move forward because that fil- you know it all filters down. So if that's if that um, stepping stone progress doesn't continue, if Top Rack doesn't move up, mm. that next space doesn't get opened in the factory team, which means that space doesn't get opened in the GRT team, which, you know, it all filters up and down. Mm-hmm. So actually, like, 
probably the most upset person that Top Rack didn't get MotoGP is first Top Rack and second Taron McKenzie because it, it does filter down in that respect and that is how you look at it. He's had uh, such a difficult start the season, Taz, hasn't he? Like yeah. the, with all the crashes and even even now getting back on his feet, he had another two. Well, like, definitely one big crash. I think is I don't know where his second crash was. I seen the the one at turn one. Yeah, so Taron like obviously got really injured, basically really early on in testing at the start of the year came back and spanned himself big time at the first test and then rightly had to take time to get himself right again. And then, yeah, he just, just seems to be beating himself up a little bit lately. And it's it's hard because, like we all try and do, if you've missed a bit of time, you have to try and get back to as quick as everyone else, as quick as you can. But everyone else has had time to build up to that. So you have to push the limits and he's finding it every now and again. He just, at the moment, he's probably just getting a bit fed up with it just because you can see it, you know, like when he, as he stood up from that crash uh, at turn one, it wasn't, it was a fast crash, but he didn't seem, seem to tumble too heavily. Yeah. But he took his time getting up. You know, it was probably one of them like, oh, Windows, yeah. like, really? You know, like, again? I know, uh, I know he didn't have the best uh, weekends on track, but did you see the McLaren? He, he got loaned for the weekend. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah Taz got lent, uh, lent a McLaren for the week. And he, he came past and beeped at me. I went, oh, mate, that's, that's got the, <laughs> like, the wimpiest little horn on it. I couldn't believe it. You know, like, he's got this well cool car. And he went, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, trick for the kid. But yeah, well well deserved after. I mean, last year he was phenomenal, wasn't he? And um, yeah. I'm sure once he once he gets a few rounds under his belt, he will come well, strong. And we even, he rode really, well. even though he, he actually rode really well from the back of the grid and then to get in the top 10 from the back of the grid at Knock Hill is not easy and then rode well in this. He did what he had to do on Sunday, yeah, which was like just flipping, just finish some races, let's start to rebuild what we've got. And he's one of them that he'll, he'll uncork it at some point and then because he's got the ability to win races, he can put in a massive points haul in a short period of time. Yeah. So don't discount him one little bit. Yeah. It's one of them where it is possible that he could sneak in the showdown yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then just have like a mint last three rounds uh-huh. and still contend for the championship with the with the regulations that we've got. Without the showdown, he would be out of the championship. 100%. Right? Yeah. But um, but yeah, well, time will tell if that comes off. And then, so then I was going to go back to the Bautista because I really wasn't sure about that. When Ducati re-signed him, I was like, you know, like, I don't see how you can do the same thing again and expect a different result. Mm-hmm. You know, like, so Bautista nearly won the, well, he won the first 11 races, didn't he? He was miles ahead in the championship. Then Johnny overhauled him, whatever it was, two years ago, three years ago. And then Alvaro went to Honda and sort of was just riding that bike to its capabilities. And now then Ducati re-signed him. And I was really unsure about that as a re-signing. Because if you think, well, you've gone toe-to-toe with Johnny already previously, the bike's the same, the ride is the same. How do you expect a different outcome? The season's not done yet, but at the moment it does seem to be working out. Yeah. Yeah, it looks, uh, as a combination, they look pretty unstoppable. They look fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. The way the way he rides that bike is, it just works. Yeah. You know, it's all well and good. As I said before about you have to have the right bike and the right rider, but it's not always as simple as that because actually those two also have to gel. So it's, it's you know, it's... And in all fairness, to be fair, so after the Ducati uh, period, he went to the Honda with Haslam. Mm-hmm. Both of them were pretty uncompetitive regularly on the Honda. This year, the Honda team may, got two riders from the MotoGP paddock. Mm-hmm. And is it Via... Via Hay and Via Hay and La- Yeah, them two. And them two are doing class as well. Yeah. They're like f- uh, regularly sort of fourth, fifth, uh, around that sort of area. Um, yeah, the, Hon- been... the Honda seems to have made a step. I'd mm. say that... And it's getting there, you know, towards the, I think actually because we're so, like, we're so lucky that BSB, the rules are so good, you know, like literally every bike on that grid, there's better ones, there's worse ones, but more or less, I mean, flipping it, they're close, you know, like I can ride with you, you can ride with Sykesy, Sykesy can ride with, you know, whoever, you know, all the bikes are so close. Yeah. Um, And that makes for racing that is just unreal. World Superbike is getting better. I think it's way better than it's been for years and years. At the moment, it's pretty clear that there's those three riders. There's three good bikes with three good riders at the moment that are... The cream. The cream of the crop. Mm. The Honda is edging its way nearer, and and Lequona, probably more than Vierge, has shown that he's really strong. Yeah. 
Um, at, at the same time, the Honda's getting closer. The two, two things to note, really. Uh, th- going into this year, I was expecting Gerloff to be closer yes. to the front. Yeah, I don't know what's Surprised happening with Garrett. Off. Yeah. And also, as the Honda's improving, that's pushing the BMW further down. And and I had a strong feeling that Scott wasn't going to challenge for, for the championship this mm-hmm. year. But I, I thought, going off like previous years, where sort of Van der Mark was, could win on his day on the Yamaha, but was like a top sort of five man. Yeah. And then he slipped into the sort of, you'd have to say like fifth to ninth group when he went to BM. I was expecting Scott to go from like challenging for wins to drop into about four, fourth, fifth, yeah. where regularly... Which I think was probably as, as worse as he would have ex- anticipated, but... Like the last race, at, um, it was Imola, wasn't it? Yes. So um, I always get them mixed up with Mizano, Imola, and there's like I just get the names mixed up. Like BMW was a disaster. Yeah. Like two seconds a lap off the pace of the front runners is not even like riding the same track. Yeah. It is, and I'm, we're talking good riders. You know, Scott, Loris, Baz, uh, Vandermark's injured, and Eugene, mm-hmm. and so they had Mitch Alchik back because to replace Vandermark. But you know, like those riders are fantastic riders they are not two seconds a lap off riders and scott battled for the championship last year and now just finds himself in absolute no man's land and i don't really think they know exactly what the, it's not like they've got the whole package and they've got a big problem with this part of the bike uh-huh. like a particular it just seems to be they just can't seem to find like uh yeah I, I don't i don't really know a great deal about it but just from like the outside it looks like they've just they're struggling for pace and they're not exactly sure where to find which it. is worse isn't it you know it's a bit like yeah. when when you ride on track and you follow someone if you if they gap you in a certain area you come back and you tell the team we need to work there yeah but you also have days where you come back and they and they say to you well where are they gaining on you and you just go well, everywhere you know like it's literally it just does, like, it, it looks like that with the bmw it's just like well we need to improve everywhere it's not just like you need to be better on the brake need to be better in the corner you need to be better no it's all of it you know like it does it does go to show though how important the bike is in our sport 100%. because i know we've said it before but it, when you like sit you no know, if you go through the bsb championship i'll just get the riders up now nearly every single rider or most riders in the championship have had a period a race or like a couple of rounds where they've looked like the, the dominant rider in the mm-hmm. championship and then you look down so obviously taz uh, absolutely smashed it last year. Glenn first round, yeah, th- with three race wins. Dan Linfoot, who do- who had a period when he was on the Honda way, he won in the wet, won in the dry. Looked like he- he'd like sort of clicked with something. You've got Vickers, who on his days, you know, can be can be anyone. And I mean, like the lap time he did at Cattle Park on yeah. the things. <laughs> You've got Skinner, who like at the weekend was amazing. Luke Mossy, who there was a time when he was on the Bournemouth bike. Oh, when he, he was, was going to win the championship. He, he was going to win the championship. Beaten Haslam. Like he, he looked like everyone in the paddock yeah. was kind of looking at him as if he's the next, if anyone's going to go to World Superbikes, it's yeah. going to be him sort of thing. And uh, obviously as you go down, there's just like, there's so many that I mean Brad Ray had that thing when he was about 21 22 where he won on the bill base bike on the at Donington mm-hmm. then he was like it was basically him and shaky and he was like the young he got a MotoGP test MotoGP test every, everything was coming to him and then I mean they don't give them out as flipping do you know what I mean yeah. in a raffle they are like and then he did have a sort of a dip in whether it's dip in form of him or whether the bikes just weren't allowing him to show what he was capable of but all the time last last year when he was on the BM he didn't do a great deal it's exactly that if you if you look at well look at bautista from honda to ducati look at scott redding from ducati to bmw yeah. look at brad ray from bmw to yamaha or kyle the same or mm-hmm. there's so many times that you can bring up those things and it's it is literally about marrying the ride to the bike and yeah. the bike that's working well at that time i'm just looking tommy bridewell can you remember that race at ulton park last year but he was like there was a, <laughs> like a second crit. pass at anyone <laughs> and then he just dominated and, and you... i was in that race and i was i was in i was in the next group and i actually thought he'd crashed because after three laps i was like that he ahead. must have crashed yeah. and, uh, you've got danny kent who's obviously a, a genuine world champion the like the only one that we've had in the uh-huh. uk since barry sheen hickman who uh, at Cadwell Park last year where yeah. he just looked unstoppable dominating you've got Kyle uh, Sykes obviously two two times world champion you've got Haslam who's obviously won numerous things won the championship uh, Danny Buchan who at times has looked unstoppable it's yeah. but yeah any of those people can finish like 14th 15th on a bad day uh-huh. and it's it is a great championship we've got like it is proper class um so in terms of World Superbikes, I've been a little bit out of touch. I watched I watched those races from Imola. Uh, they're at 
uh, where they're at next. I know MotoGP are at Aston this weekend, aren't they? Yeah. I can't remember where World Superbikes are at next, do you know? No, we've got, I don't know, but we've got Donington coming up soon. I do know that. Yeah. So that'll and... be interesting. But hopefully there'll be a good British contingent go and turn up and watch that. Do you know, yeah. Do you know many, do you know who's doing wild cards for that weekend? I uh, don't actually. I know that Taron is supposed to be because he was supposed to do Aston earlier in the year and obviously he got injured. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that he is he is penciled in. And that is on a, um, that's not his BSB bike. Yeah, like a so World Superbike spec. That's a proper World Superbike spec. So that that'll be good. built by Crescent, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Put into their colours, their McCam's colours. Yeah. Um, and yeah. yeah so that'll give him a real good chance to, to have a go at it. I don't know if he's going to get to test it beforehand because mm. it, like I said, I've just been out on a bike with electronics and it's so different. Yeah. So I hope that he gets a chance to test it. No, we were saying about like so-and-so beating so-and-so and so-and-so. Last year, uh, Luke Mossy on like a not a competitive bike at all was ahead of Bautista on the factory Honda at Donington. Yeah, on the bike. Pedicini and bike. And you look at now and like you say, he's like, he's in BSB this this year having a hard time yet he was scoring points yeah, by, in, by he was, that, by he, that he was scoring no, points yeah, in could, world bikes, yeah. like battling with Bautista last year and you're just thinking like oh, like it is mad because you look at that you could say okay well Luke Mossy could be leading the world superbike championship or <laughs> if Al, or the other way if Alvaro came to BSB he'd never score a point it's like but it's not it's a snapshot in time in it you know it's Exactly that, yeah. Uh, in terms of MotoGP for this weekend, I just quick. By the time this podcast goes out, it'll be Sunday night, so the racing will have finished. Are you still on? Are you still sticking a couple of quid on a few races, or have you? Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I'd, I'd, I'd put money on um, Alicia Spargo at eighty to one to win the championship, but I backed out. I, I, Can you cash out? I have cashed out early, so I'm already out. I'm gutted because actually, I think I cashed out far too early. It was after like round three, and I thought he can't keep this up. Flipping fair play to him, he's kept it up. Like those are pretty as look awesome right now yeah, yeah um and yeah Prilly are going to have a second team because the um the rnf team or whatever you call it the what was the patronus team are switching um they're the ones that are going to go to Aprilia. so that's going to be a real speaking of us alicia alicia's just topped fp3 today oh is he yeah despite a uh, late crash so he's crashed but he, he is top but yeah he's i know just... mav was is about third as well or something so he's starting to show more of the mav that people employ him for yeah well impressive that um Paulus Bargo is out due ruled out with a rib injury uh it looks like Dixon's Dixon's had a crash and Sam Lowe's has had a crash they Dixon and Sam seem to be crashing a lot this year yeah um Sam was back on the box at Saxon Ring but I think that's the first time he'd scored in the last five or six races two of which I think were his own doing and the other ones weren't so he's been unfortunate but also sort of Sam has a lot of front enders. It's it's weird one with Sam because he with the one when he does crash with it, it's as if it's come out of nowhere. But he just does it so often, so it's a strange one. Jake's having a, a reasonably strong year, you know. And certainly in the free practices, he's he's always he's he's now that regularly in the top group of say eight riders. Yeah. Um, he's probably a bit frustrated at the moment with his overall results. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, he's really starting to show the form that. In terms of like outright speed, he's he's got it. It's hundred percent. It just seems stringing it together and st and staying on. Yeah, really. when you when you listen to him on the when you watch him and listen to him, it, it's almost like he second guesses himself quite a lot. You know, he seems to overthink the job almost. You know, you almost you, you sort of think when you watch it, you're like, just Jake, just go race. You know, like you've got it. Just do you know what I mean? Yeah. But he's because um, there was obviously there was plenty of talk of him maybe going to MotoGP. That seems to have gone really really quiet. So the MotoGP thing's gone been rocked massively by the by the news that Suzuki's pulling out, which yeah. has been the big sort of I think it's actually gonna kick start a load of things going on. So obviously Mir and, and Rins are looking for a ride now. Mm -hmm. It looks like Mir is going to go to Repsol Honda to partner Mark Marquez. Uh Paul Espargo is apparently going to Tech 3 KTM. Um and apparently that was that's a done deal and Actually, I was listening to it before and they reckon that's why he's decided his ribs is hurting because he can't be bothered now to ride his Honda. Um, and Honda are having a terrible time of it. It's that weird scenario now that Honda is always thought of as the best bike that now people are almost shying away from it. You know, I think it was that last round that they it's, they, it's the first time they haven't scored a point like any Honda in something like, it was, a, it was a, a crazy stat, you know, like 15 years or something that it's the first time they haven't scored a point mm -hmm. in all that time. So they're, they're really in the doldrums to trying to trying to yeah. understand what's going on. So yeah, apparently Nakagami's not going to keep his seat, and Ayagora's going to come in. Right, they're going to give Alex Marquez the boot, and 
Um, I think Olivier is going to go into that seat, which will be really interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a load of a load of movement going on um, with with all those teams. Mm. I've, um, are you going to go to the British Grand Prix this year? Have you got, got plans to go there? No, I don't think I will. Yeah, um, I went last year and it was. Um, yeah, it. I, I really wish it was at Donington. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It, still, Silverstone's great as a to race, especially on those big bikes, because I'm. You need to let them stretch their legs. Yeah, but I think the atmosphere that Silverstone creates is a little bit stale. It, it's purely just because it's like so Too safe big. in it's, terms of the runoffs and everything. Yeah. It just takes a little bit away from the spectators. Um, 100%. Feeling the speed and feeling the 100%. things. 100%. If you're that sort of far away, it looks quite slow. It does. Yeah. Reg- despite the fact they're doing 200 and something mile an hour. Yeah. You're like... It's like the best riders on the best bikes in the world. And you're like, it's a little bit deflating. Yeah. Think, anyway. Um, FP4 results. So Quattro is top. Quattro is on such good form at the moment. Bang Nye is second. Miller third. Alicia Spargo fourth. Uh, Miguel Oliveira fifth, Martin sixth, Bastanini seventh, Mav eighth, uh, Binder, Brad Binder ninth, and Luca Marini tenth. Luca Marini is another one that's coming on strong. Yeah, well, I, I got it wrong just before. So Oliveira is going to the Aprilia RNF, and uh, Alex Rins is going to ride the LCR bike that Alex Marquez is getting rid of. Right, okay. So it's really, and apparently Alex Marquez is going to go on to. Um, either Bastianini's bike or who like one of those two bikes so there's quite a lot of there's, so a lot. there's loads of moving and shaking and obviously the big fight at the moment is for the second seat in the factory Ducati yeah yeah because Zarko wants it doesn't he but I don't think he's Zarko is not going to get it which is weird because he's the top Ducati right, right now in the championship yeah he's not been out of the top four in the last five races or something yeah, yeah he's doing a great job for but me he's just team. not going to get it is he <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I had by, I've, well, I've got like an old Ducati team I think now I'm um, I've I changed things around because I did have Suzuki as my manufacturer, but as soon as they pulled out, I've changed it to Ducati. But because Ducati were quite expensive, I had to sell, sell some riders and get <laughs> some less good. But yeah, I've had Zarko in from day one and Bang Naya. Bang Naya is so talented and such a good rider, but he's just crashing too much at the moment. Yeah, it looks like he's out of the, out of the championship fight now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for that, that second seat, so obviously Miller's leaving, he's going to factory KTM. Yeah. So that's a done deal. So um, there's Jorge Martin and Anea Bastanini sort of scrapping over that second Ducati bike. But it's kind of a weird scenario that we've got in in racing now in MotoGP because it's weird because those factory bikes are no different to the bike they're on anyway. They're yeah. literally just changing garage. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. They're scrapping over a bike that's not going to be any different to what they've got now. It's a, It's almost a more of a kudos thing and more of a yes they'll have more technicians they are more involved in the factory but actually they've probably got within reason the same chance on the bikes they're on now yeah and maybe even in less of a pressured some riders scenario yeah. some riders definitely do better in and i did actually read something about zarko saying he's happy where he is and maybe that is the knowledge that he's got he's got a bit more sort of time under his belt than the two young guns that are fighting for it mm-hmm. that really want the factory seat you just wonder whether he's just like playing that clever game and just goes, do you know what? I'm quite happy where I am. And racing is so much about the head, isn't it? If you've got a happy head, you go fast. Yeah. If you haven't got the pressure of you're in the factory team, you have to perform, otherwise you're toast. You know, actually, you could be better off. Oh, 100%. 100%. Um, so in terms of uh, predictions for this weekend, who are you fancying for top three? Uh, I'm going to go for Quattararo and the two Aprilia's just for an odds thing, I think Mav was incredible at Aston last year when he was like wanting out of Yamaha and suddenly turned it on for one race. Yeah. So I'm going to do that just because I think the odds will be quite good on him. It's always quite a close race <laughs> there, and it is. And but sure if Quattro, much... if he gets his if he gets his flow going, he's been fast all weekend. Aleish just seems to have found that sweet spot of being able to just he's never out the top five in any session now. You know, like he's I was his biggest critic, like. Honestly, I could not understand why anyone employed him. I just didn't get it. Yeah. And like, I'm, I'm sure on the podcast, we've once said something about like how amazing his manager is. Yeah. <laughs> like before before yeah. he had this like sort of massive spur, he'd, he'd Unreal. been in GP for so long without doing it, without showing never any even, glimpses. He never even got a podium until yeah. Silverstone last year, like in any class. He was, <laughs> it was just bizarre. And yet he's got, you know, a house in Andorra and three Porsches and you know like whatever it is living, the life, living yeah. the life he flies his pl- private plane everywhere you just think oh my god you know so I've gone from being his biggest critic to actually I quite like him because I because because I've disliked him so much now I really quite <laughs> almost cheer for him mm-hmm. you know like and he's 
and it's weird because he's still not not in a way he's still not almost given the respect that he deserves you know that he still gets talked about but not talked about directly yeah you know like he's an afterthought whenever you hear all the any of the pundits they go right who's your who's your man for this week and they go oh you know francesco bagnaia fabio quattararo even jorge martin blah 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 uh, la shall be there but it's the it's always the afterthought and yet mm. he's the one sticking it to him he's the one second in the championship you know I mean, bless him when the other week at Barcelona, when he <laughs> celebrated a lap too early. I mean, oh, the poor guy. Funny enough, we <laughs> just started a thing on the on the podcast where I can't remember who it started with, but I asked them what the most embarrassing... Yeah, it was uh, Gav, Gav Emmett, I think it was. Uh-huh. Asked them the most embarrassing moment of the life and it became like a running theme. And then <laughs> when that happened, it was like... Um, I think I put a thing on the Facebook saying like, what, Alish, what's your most embarrassing moment of your life? And then <laughs> Alish, hold my beer. <laughs> and then, like, the, I played that video. Do you have like a standout embarrassing moment of your life? Uh, no, I'll think about it for the next part, which yeah. is probably next week. <laughs> yeah. Right, we've got... Um, I obviously put on that you're coming on on the Patreon page. A few questions. Um... Greg Murta said, have you ever thought about going road racing? I think you've talked about this before. Yeah, I talked about it before. It's always a thought process, but actually probably by the next pod, I'll have a baby as well. So I think that's less of a consideration for me now because I just think it's an extra. I've never had anyone that depends on me and now I will do so. Hey, congratulations. Thanks. When's it due? Uh, it's due August the 21st. I could really do with it coming Monday after Brands. <laughs> Because that would really help me out in terms of how busy Schedule, I am. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you remember uh, one of Danny Buchan's kids that he had? He, it was delivered on like a Friday night. So he did FP1, FP2, went to hospital during the night, they delivered the baby, and then he was back for like qualifying the next day. Well, so. actually, Mossy, I think, had won at Alton one time, and his baby, one of his, I think he got a few, uh, and his kid or one of them was delivered on the Sunday, and he'd won. So he'd had a really good day. Wow. I'm pretty sure I remember that rightly, but he certainly got the podium and a, and a kid in one day. It's quite good going. Yeah, class. Aye. Uh, well, uh, yeah, congratulations about that anyway. Um, Luke, Kai, considering how quick you've been on the Suzuki and how Ducati have struggled this year, do you think that moving to Suzuki this year was an unexpected upgrade than, than to racing for Ducati again? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um you know, I've been really frustrated with my results this year because I've had two years of pretty much going home every weekend with a trophy. And you know how you get used to that that feeling. That becomes the norm. That becomes the norm and that becomes the norm really quickly. And then all of a sudden, when that's not happening, you, the frustration sets in really quickly as well. So, you know, I don't have any any baseline to understand where I should be on the Suzuki. I'm going quicker than it's gone previously. I'm scoring reasonably good results um but it's not where i expect to be yeah and i was actually having this conversation with my dad and he said well do you think you'd be any better off if you're on the uk don't know is the honest answer i really don't know i think the continuity really helps i think a lot of the time that i'm struggling to get up to speed is because when you come back to a track on the same bike with the same team you just hit fp1 hard and you're already in that zone you're in already yeah. in that window and you just work on refining things whereas i've sort of at the moment i'm finding that I'm not comfortable until I get into a race or race two and then I start to find my flow and then, you know, then you're somewhere near. But then it's, but then the weekend's over, you know, I almost need to race on Monday. Yeah. So, don't know, you know, you never know what the bike to be on is at the time. And I don't like to think of it that way because then you're always wishing something else. So for me, I'm on the Suzuki. I think it's, it's a, an enjoyable bike to ride. I think I'm getting more or less the most out of it, but I think at the moment, but I do think we've got more to give anyway. Yeah. So I do think there's more to come. I think we can spring a few surprises before the season's out. I really still hope we can get into the showdown. I've made it really hard for myself by the situation at the weekend. Losing three races was an absolute disaster because actually I think we were quite strong at, at Knock Hill. You know, yeah. I felt every time I went out on track, I could ride round and be in the top 10 not with relative ease, nothing's with relative ease, but you know, like it was, it was feeling okay, good. you know, yeah, feeling yeah. good. And it was the first time I rode it in the wet and we P1'd in the wet and actually it felt really good. Mm. So I'm hoping that if we get another wet session, it's not always a given, but it felt nice, you know, so mm-hmm. it's got its strengths. Yeah. It, for some reason that the bike seems to, I mean, uh, Coop's won on, in the wet on that bike years ago, Brands had. Yeah. Gino, Gino was like amazing in the wet. So yeah. Hopefully. It just seems to, to pick up, grip from the rear really well you know like when i was riding around at knock hill in the first wet session and i actually wasn't going to go out so 
it's only because so many people, a bit like you, you know, like you knew the rest of the weekend was dry. So you gain nothing from it, do you? So I'd spoke to the team, like, should we go out? And well, we'll see what everyone else does. And then like when about 20 people went out, you know, you sort of feel bad. Yeah. So I was like, I better go out. But sort of my, not my head wasn't in it, but you know, you're just like, well, I'll just go and roll around. But then it was like, oh, this is good. You know, like. Like a pleasant surprise. Yeah, yeah, pleasant surprise. And riding the wet's weird, isn't it? Because when you don't get the feeling, it's the most horrible thing going. Yeah. And yet when you do get the feeling, actually, you almost sometimes have more feel than you do in the dry because you've mm. got a bit more movement from the blocks of the tyres. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. Class. Uh, Jacob Cuthbertson, I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, will you be doing any more endurance races, which you've already answered? P.S. My girlfriend wants to know your skincare routine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I use Aldi's own brand. I think no, I do. I do. I use, I've, I've used it for years. <laughs> yeah. I wash twice a week and that's and then put Aldi's, twice a week. Aldi's cream on it. Class. Um, Jess, Mortimer, <laughs> Jess Mortimer. Uh, there seems to be more mid-season training injuries these days. Sorry to bring it up, but 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 it's not just you, is it? What do you think is so hard to replicate bike fitness? Make sure you get your co-presenter fee, Christian, as well. Um, that's, I think maybe Jess must have thought you've like pre had like a mid season uh, practicing injury, which it wasn't. It was just at the round. But in terms of other pre season, I can't really think of many other people that have had pre season incidents recently. John McPhee had one. John McPhee had one, but actually, we just had um, Pedro Acosta's just broke his femur motocrossing. So he's out for this weekend. Wow. So yeah, that is a big hit. Um, yeah. I think it's difficult because, especially in. There's so many different bikes you can ride now to to keep to keep fit and keep sharp. Yeah, I think in BSB most riders use motocross because it's the most accessible and easy. Mm-hmm. I think actually on the continent you get them a lot on the pit bikes or the you know like Fuck the Ovali it. type things and those yeah. sort of things. And they're not going slow on them neither. So you know you had Scott Red in the year before that broke his leg just before the start of the year on a on a pit bike. Yeah. The long and short of it, in my opinion, is you run the risk, but you're better off being running the risk of getting hurt than turning up to a race and just being a, a little bit off par. Yeah. Because otherwise, I'm sort of of the you're opinion. Guaranteed. There's no There's no point turning up if you're not turning up at your best. Yeah. So, yes, there's a risk factor. You know, we've had it in the past. We've had Dovi get hurt. We've had Rossi get hurt. You know, we've had big names get hurt riding motocross or dirt track or, you know, you hear the Marquez has had a crash somewhere, you know. But I just think it keeps you sharp. So, and I think now, because the... Every year, the bikes get, the rules get better. The tires are the same tires as in like we all, it's it's a one make series. The electronics are now one make. Everything is getting taken away from, the external facts are getting taken away. So you have to find the smaller and smaller marginal gains. So if you find that marginal gain by being sharp, arriving sharp, then I think that's why you see more than what you might maybe previously did. Yeah. Just because people are doing more between races. Yeah. I def- it, it, it's just a volume versus... I'm I'm in that sort of uh, position where I think I would massively benefit from going motocrossing. I mean, we had this fitness-wise. conversation the other day, didn't we? I said I said to you, buy a motocross bike, and you were like, mm. but I, like I just feel because I mean I did do a little bit of motocross when I was a kid, but I wasn't particularly good at it, and I feel like because I don't have a high level of skill, the chance like say if me and you both went motocrossing the chance of me injuring myself is much higher than the chance of you because you're much more competent on the bike. So, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one for me. But, it is a difficult yeah. one because you tried the pit bike as well and you didn't find it was D- beneficial. No, I just found it wasn't, wasn't like physically demanding. Yeah. So, therefore, I mean, it's a good laugh with your mates and stuff, but I just thought it was, I was like wasting time, yeah. wasting time and f- fuel. <laughs> but I, do, I just think the number, number of injuries thing is just a pure volume thing. Yeah. Riders are trying to keep on the bike because there's no better thing than to keep on a yeah. bike. We don't get to ride the big bikes normally. So Compared you have to, to a normal something. season as well, I, I don't think it's particularly high this year, to be fair. No, I, I don't think, I don't think it's, it's been average. extra. But. Yeah. Um, NK, that, that's down as the name. Uh, any of you three guys going to be attending the Sunflower Race this year at Bishop's Court? I haven't got any plans, but I'd definitely be open open to... If there's any seats available, I'd, I would be up for it. What about yourself? Yeah, I'd love to. I'm, I think I've still got the trophy at home because it's not been run since the last time I won it. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and yeah, when I did win it, it was I had to pass Coops on the last lap who was riding the Hawk bike. So I know that the team are probably not against going. So I'd like to do it. I enjoy going over there. It's a good track there. Um, 
obviously over there the fans are always pretty cool as well they always get a good attendance so yeah i'd, I'd love, to, love to go to the sunflower Did, I'd, in terms of the track is it is it like a bsb spec track facilities wise and stuff uh, what do you mean by facility wise because it's got flush toilets or like... <laughs> well could could bsb logistically go there i think they could yeah i think it's been looked into there's no like real garages but it's it's like a old airfield like, same as cadwell, cadwell, cadwell same as cadwell no no garages um i think the track is safe enough it's the I think Bishop's Court could do with the last sector just being changed because it just gets a little bit fiddly and right. a bit of a strange last sector. But literally, if they change one corner, I think it'd be good to go. Mm. It'd, I think it would be good for the championship, wouldn't it? To, to like, I know people think it's a ball lake. A lot of Southern people think it's a ball lake coming up to Knock Hill. Yeah, but, but they I don't think... realise what it's like living up here. Well, I think it's really <laughs> important that people from the north of England and Scotland have a have a track somewhere near. A hundred percent. It's like, good I, for I, all of us, like in the long run. I know we said it before, but you know, like. I, Anglesey, I, I really wish there was a race at Anglesey. There's not many people around there, though. That's the only thing. It's a great track, but in terms of, like, say, if I had one in Northern Ireland, there's a massive but I do, pool of but people But I do that think that come. it's the British Superbike Championship. So I do think you should have one in Wales and Northern Ireland. Mm, yeah, I suppose in, in Wales, you've only got Pembrey and... Or go Pembrey. It's even further away, but it doesn't matter. You know, like... Yeah, Pembrey's not a very good track for BSB, I wouldn't think. Anglesey's definitely better than Pembrey. Yeah, it's a difficult one because we're talking about all these different like things. Like, So what makes a track that's good enough for BSB? Well, Pembrey's short or Anglesey's, or whatever it is, but Knock Hill's really short. Or you go, oh, well, Bishop's Court's got no facilities, but neither's Cadwell Park. You know, like, so what, I, I don't know what it is they're looking for that makes it so we go, yeah, we can go so there funny. or we can't go there. You know, like what ticks that box? Mm. And I think it's a bit unfair that certain tracks are overlooked. You know, like we've got Croft up the road. I, I think Croft's a bit dangerous, as it is at the moment. I think they would have to do something to it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been resurfaced. You know, I ride it when when I coach there. So it's got a great surface. It's it's longer than most BSB tracks. You know, like that would put the another track away from that group, that cluster of tracks that are sort of Midlands to South. Yeah. That would help people further up North. Yeah. So yeah. We, we've definitely got other tracks, you know, like, I would 100% go Bishop's Court, um, Anglesey and Croft to add three more to the calendar. Yeah, rather than... Because I think we've got Donington twice and Alton twice yeah. and Brands twice. Yeah. So, yeah, so spread it out. But I quite like the fact that we do Donington two different layouts. Yes, me too. Yeah, I prefer, definitely prefer the National as well. Do you? Yeah. I, just... I prefer the long one, but I just like the fact that we do... At least it's different yeah. both times because at least then you're doing not the same. Yeah, I just think the last sector is just like straight hairpin, straight hairpin. It's like... The rest of it's like really like cool corners and like something, <laughs> yeah. something about it where the, I, I think you do the full track, it's mega. You get down to foggy S's and then you're like, oh, like. Go stop, go stop. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> um, but last, last Patreon, I have missed a few Patreon questions because we've already like sort of covered the topics and stuff. But um, last one from Andy Hosking. And he said, usual question about the embarrassing th moment, which we'll do on the next <laughs> podcast. You're like, you can have a think. And uh, what are your greatest achievements? And if you could do it all over again, would you change anything about your career path? <sighs> greatest achievements? I don't even know. I don't. Uh, whenever I've been asked it before, I think I'm still. I say I'm still yet to have me greatest achievement um, in racing. <sighs> don't know. I, I do think that I've still got more to give, and I, until I achieve the goal that I want to do, which is BSV champion, I don't think I will have achieved what I want to achieve. Yeah. Um, career path. I wish that my time at, and it's not that I ch could have changed path. It's not, it wasn't something, it was taken out of my hands. But when I was at World Super Sport with MV Augusta, um, I had a two-year contract, but the team lost the contract with the manufacturer. So therefore my contract was void. And we just started to stretch our legs at the end of that year, got some upgrades with the bike. And the year after, it seemed like a really good bike because it then had Cluzel on it the year after. And... I just really wish that I had that opportunity to continue with that because I do think that my career would have been different. Yeah. Um, you know, we were putting it to the likes of Vandermark, Top Rack, you know, like I could, I was with them, battling with them, and they've gone on to, uh, sorry, Keenan, not Top Rack, but they, like all them lot went on to really great things. Vandermark, especially, sort of been able to just continue through his career and I think I had the measure of him but paths divide and that's how it goes on. So in terms of how it got, how it spread apart, that that was to me the, 
the dividing part of how my sort of career went the other way. I then had to go on, uh, not had to, but I then went to World Superbike, but with the with the Bermota thing. So it was just a highway to nowhere. And then you just have to start again, back yeah. to BSB and just reset the, you know, the you go again, basically. So that that's where I wish it had changed, but it's not something that I regret because I made a a poor decision, you know, like it was just literally that is it taken away from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was a shame. Yeah, it's it's one of them things, isn't it? Like looking looking back, you, yeah, you can't really change it, but it's uh, kind of frustrating in some ways. But then other doors have been opened that you would yeah. have, and yeah, hundred percent. I I genuinely like I'm, I always try and go with a positive mindset. So every every opportunity that you get given, if if you take it with open arms and make the most of it, if you spend too long wishing that something else had happened, then you just always you know your your head's somewhere wrong. You know what I mean? It's like a I think you just have to concentrate on what you're doing right now and make the most of it, and then good things will come. Mm -hmm. Just a quick one. Random question, but you know how we used to have the Transatlantic Trophy where mm -hmm. you'd put like a team together from the UK? If you could put, uh, let's just say, they're all on uh, Suzuki, like standard Suzuki JSXRs, and there was like a UK versus the rest of Europe, say, and it was some, some kind of like... A superbike championship or let, let's pretend like every t every country put like five riders up yeah so you could you could have your choice of five um riders from bsb just bsb yeah or so british it, riders um we'll do B just bsb from okay. the superbike grid now so you yeah. can include like australians and s uh, such like uh, so you can take five riders which five riders would you take so for i can have i can have jason so you'd obviously put yourself in and then another four. I would have Kyle and Brad. Yeah. And I probably would have Taryn. Yeah. So, so that'd be my five. Interesting that you went for you and the four Yamaha riders. Yeah. <laughs> no talking about like, because, do you know, this time last year, Yeah. would you have chosen Kyle, Kyle and Brad? Brad? Considering that at I think the time... I probably would have chosen Kyle this time last year, mm -hmm. and I think I probably would have chosen Skinner. Mm. So I've changed Skinner for Brad, <laughs> that... which, is, which is a close one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it it is interesting. I think like as a and probably people listening to this probably think why Kyle, but I think there's something underlying that he's yet to uncover. Unlocked, yeah. And I don't know whether he's ever going to. I think he's got the power actually to do it. Yeah, and it's whether he decides to do it. Mm. He's what it's, he, he's a rider that, like, on his day can be, like, and he has had some like amazing opportunities over the years. Mm -hmm. Like, you no, know, when he was like seventeen and he got that podium in in a World Super Sport wild card. Oh, unreal! And what then, a race! And then got the what you would say was like sort of the best ride in World Super Sport at well, the he time. Was Keenan's teammates. teammate, yeah, teammates were Keenan, and it just never seemed to work. Yeah. And then the Yamaha like which was Sam Lowe's had won that with that team and stuff and it just never seemed to work and then he'll kind of come back and regather and he, it has a period where he's like a little bit off the radar and then he'll be like he's mega dominant on that Moto 2 bike yeah and then then went quiet then he came to BSB with Craig Fitzpatrick didn't he and really struggled and stopped riding and then almost retired almost retired did a stock thousand race on the hawk bike didn't he and then yeah. got the ride for yeah. that year and was fantastic and then all of a sudden was thrust back into the limelight then probably had his head turned by another team and decided to jump it didn't work but now he's stuck with that team they've changed manufacturer and then it's working again it is working yeah so you know we were just saying about how careers change you're like <laughs> yeah. that's a roller coaster <laughs> yeah massively but i just yeah so i guess people listening to it go oh why cow yeah he's my mate one is but two there's something there's something in there but it's just it's frustrating for me to almost watch him sometimes because you're like there's more there you know like but it's whether he wants to unlock it and you he only he can do that you know like as much as you'd someone from the outside might try and assist him mm. unless he wants to do that i think i think he's got it in his pocket yeah it's and it, it how is, much he wants to do that and it is also interesting the fact you've said skinner when lee's ahead of him in the championship at the moment on the same bike yeah but i said skinner for last year if I'd oh right yeah year. sorry sorry i thought yeah, yeah, yeah. For, but yeah no it is, would a be out. it is a natural thing though that people people do often sit, like wood picks it, 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 in a way like I think it's because he's Lee Jackson is probably the elacious bargaro of BSB yeah. you know like how we just spoke about you know like gets overlooked 
lead at the moment is just he is always there. He will always be there. He's fight for wins. He'll win some. Might win the championship. But he's just I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But some people just don't ever get that. Say so you mentioned Dan Linfoot before. He never really got the um like the real sort of respect that he deserved for what he was doing. Same as uh, let's let's go big with it. Juan Mir when he won the MotoGP World Championship, like the most forgotten world champion ever. It was two years ago. Mm -hmm. No one almost blinked an eyelid. You know, like I don't even think Suzuki <laughs> sold the championship T-shirt for him. You know, it was just like mm -hmm. okay. it is not, not like saying they were like, oh well, we'll see who wins next year, shall we? You know, like yeah. it was bizarre. Mm -hmm. You're right. Like, say, do you know if it was at the NEC, like if like uh, Marquez was coming, yeah, everyone there would be a buzz if. Quattro hours coming, uh -huh. there'd be a buzz. Me is coming, it would be like, I don't right. think people would be that bothered. No, but exactly. He's a genuine world champion exactly. on an unfavoured bike. Mm -hmm. It's like unbelievable what he did. But you are bang on, like it's it is a it is a weird one. Um wrap it to wrap things up so we we've got quite a break now we've got f uh, another four weeks i think yeah four weeks till brands Thank hatch god yeah so uh hopefully um your arm will be in a lot better better position by then uh, and then obviously there'll be in that gap there'll be world two bike races and more gp at assen this weekend um and have you got anything else to wrap things up no no i'm all good that's been i'm just happy to be back it's nice Excellent. i, I want to know who dropped out <laughs> no, no one, no one, no, no. We've um, it's it's just difficult at the moment. With I've been working down in Coventry, so um, my and obviously just coordinate with Dom. I'm hardly ever home at the moment. Um, but yeah, appreciate you coming round. It is something like eight or nine or something that you've been on now. So thanks for that, and um. Yeah, ma massive thank you to our sponsors, Colchester Kawasaki, uh, to our all of our patrons. Really appreciate all the support, and we we'll look forward to catching up sometime soon. Hold on. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Ta. Chasing the racing. Powered by Colchester Kawasaki. Part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles.